Good day, everyone. Uh, this is the Beehive production users call. Uh, the date is wrong on the document. Apologies. It should be July the 13th. Okay. Uh, we have Michael, Antronic, myself, Mark, Sean, uh, Hettinger, Alejandro, and John, as well as Jan in here. And... Um, this is indeed a production meeting call. So if anyone has any topics in their mind, uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, this is John. I don't have anything specific to, to talk about today other than I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I was getting some uh, arm systems in and I hope to have those actually should be racked and available this week and i have an opportunity to to have free bsd on one of them and try to do some some beehive work um but i i don't know most of what i've seen appears to be a bit out of date um and i had asked basically asked a question about that uh, a couple of weeks ago and i didn't know if anything had changed i haven't seen anything um, but anyways, it's uh, just a minor update there. That's all. That's actually so, a very good question. Is, is Beehive available on ARM? No, not in uh, head, in FreeBSD at least. It's be, it has been worked on, and there is a Beehive ARM64 branch. I don't know how far behind it is. It's, it's, um, it's getting stale. Yeah, and how feature completed ever was. All right. Looks like it's falling behind and rot rotting merrily away unless someone takes up the mantle. Okay, understandable. Yeah, that, that would be very interesting. So so I, I assume that the ARM visualization solutions overall is either ESX size solution, <clears throat> the one that they have for ARM, or um, it, does Linux do visualization on ARM these days? The yeah, QE oh, means two yeah. MU does, and it's 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 hardware accelerated. Yes. Uh, I don't know about I don't know about that part. Okay, maybe okay. it can be on the right hardware. Oh, okay, okay, understandable. Nice. That's a very good thing to know. Uh, well, John, if you find something, let us know. I think that would be interesting for the community and uh, interesting for the community and. Uh, uh, I, I have no idea about the uh, if, if there is any work going to be done in, in that aspect. And uh, Mark shared something with us. It's called... Uh, in regards to Linux running uh, yeah. ARM machines, you can run it via QEMU this way. Um, however, this is more of a beehive beating, but this is how you can basically build Packer templates for Raspberry Pis. I have someone looking at the, the QEMU stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was I was more interested in, in seeing status and possibilities of, of using Beehive. FreeBSD is my is my desired goal if possible. Understandable. Okay, that's interesting. One so of the problems I remember is that I think they used the espresso mm -hmm. bin boards as a platform. Mm -hmm. And then there was a problem that ARM sixty four has different kinds of interrupt controllers. Yes, it does. And the one they supported is the old where one where um, hardware virtualization and especially hardware interrupt support and so on for guests and device pass through was always an afterthought and not well thought out. So, so basically the newer hardware like the Ampere servers is in theory better, but uh, the, what is it called? GICV3 or something? Yes, yes. GICV3. That's the that's the technique that they that use one for like the timers. That one wasn't already supported, the but the predecessor yeah. with some workarounds. I remember that there was a de demo of it booting FreeBSD and FreeBSD, but it may have been that they only used VMN and used. Uh, QEMO to drive it or something? There's some compromises made. That's 
that that is very yeah well i think we'll have to wait for updates from the developers on that and um, um uh probably best to hit up the right mailing lists plural mm -hmm. to figure out if there's anyone still interested in supporting this and transferring knowledge to whoever wants to take over where they left off, maybe reignite interest. I don't know why it stopped because the hardware now exists, but one of the big problems with ARM is that basically the reasonable performance mid-priced hardware is missing. So you can get a unbelievable combination of different single board vendors showing up and disappearing after they threw some hardware at you. And then you have on the upper end machines starting at a few thousand dollars uh, and two rack units. But the thing uh, a developer would like to have in a corner of his room, that's missing. So they leave the mini or micro ATX boards with for a few hundred bucks. So, yeah. Michael brought a good point from a topic yesterday. I think that was the networking topic of the jails calls, right? Which one? Uh, which is, uh, we've been doing networking wrong for years. Put the host IP on the bridge. Don't oh, add yes. its nick as a member. I don't get the second part, by the way. If someone can oh, explain, um, I'd be very happy. Sure, Mox, um, Mox does this. So the this is operating system specific on how it's represented. The problem is that this manifests mostly with IPv6 and it can t uh, do a number on your network setup is that IPv6 has a concept of a link scope. Right. So if you have a bridge from the IPv6 point of view, everything attached to the bridge is on the same link. Oh. But if you put IPv6 addresses or even IPv4 addresses, on the member ports of a bridge, like a lot of tools do, because they don't want to mess up the existing configuration, then it's a complete misconfiguration because then you have basically a split brain situation on your link where each interface is its own link while there shouldn't be multiple links. So the only way to avoid this in FreeBSD is to only put the uh, IP addresses on the bridge interface and instead only configure the other member interfaces as link state up and member interface with no uh, IP addresses configured on them. So that they are basically empty scopes so they can, won't collide with anything. So, so, so as an IPv4 guy, I do have to ask this question. So if mm -hmm. let's say um, it's I still have... wrong, but it doesn't explode as often and as uh, I annoyingly. See. So if if I do have and Michael, thank you very much for joining. Um, and uh, we will see you hopefully next week. It's very yeah, weird. Yeah, my pleasure. Like, uh, Zoom ahead. has an issue. Like you're logged in as Michael. I'm logged in as Michael. So I'm seeing your messages as if they are sent by me. <laughs> right. So try to keep that <laughs> untangled. Um, so a good point from yesterday was that with IPv6, it typically works until it doesn't and there's not an easy way out. So yeah, do explore that topic as much as you can because it's pretty darn important and way overdue. And apparently so it's not jail specific. Thank you, Michael. At least uh, uh, the FreeBSD side, on the FreeBSD side, the configuration is uh, in theory simple, but it can be a bit... Um, uh, intimidating to do because you have to change your whole configuration mm -hmm. because you have to remove all of the IP addresses, both IPv4 and IPv6 from your physical network card, which is a bridge member, Put create a bridge, put it as first member to the, into the bridge. Mm -hmm. It's important that it's the first member so that the bridge uses the MAC address of the physical network card as its address so that you, for example, don't lose your DHCP uh, leases and so on, or your static, uh, the, um, st uh, sorry, stateless auto configuration doesn't change. 
once you've done this, you just add all the addresses you used to have on the now member interface on the bridge and everything should keep on working, but you have to make sure that things like firewall configurations or demons listening on a specific interface uh, have to be reconfigured. So it's really just, uh, if you know about it, it's easy to fix. Uh, you can get it wrong that you can change it one address family at a time. So that even if you don't have a dedicated out of band management, you can make sure that you do, for example, IPv6 first, you change your IPv6 configuration, you make sure that it works, then you log in over, over the now correctly configured IPv6. You use IPv6 to reconfigure IPv4 as well, and then everything should so keep on working. Jan, I want to understand the second sentence. Don't add its NIC as a member. So it means, for example, no, no, if stop. I have, uh, you, if, you do if want I have... to add it, sorry. So, you so, want to, that's just wrong there. Um, don't add a NIC as a member is wrong. What's wrong okay. is to put IP addresses on member interfaces. Oh, okay. Don't add, don't, okay, don't, don't add, add addresses to IP bridge member interfaces. To bridge member interfaces. So, um, okay. Open as a, a BSD has finally, after their bridge driver has gotten even um, uglier, uh, has grown more tentacles than the FreeBSD one, which takes some doing, um, rectified this design flaw by adding something they call, call virtual Ethernet bridging, VEB is their driver. And as soon as, uh, yeah, that's the old one. And so this as is soon the old you, one, there's a new one. Yes, VEB. VEB, virtual Ethernet Ether bridge. Virtual, yep. Okay. And as soon as you add ports to them as members, they cease being IP interfaces and are only layer two interfaces. And the bridge is also, the VEB interface is only a bridge. To have a port on the bridge where you can put IP addresses, you use the VEFA driver so that you basically emulate a switch and you logically plug the VEFA port into the bridge so that the host is just another member. So that you have a uh -huh. clean design where you have the layer two ports of mm -hmm. the bridge, you have the bridge, and then you have one layer two bridge port, which just is the con connection for the host. Yeah. Okay, and this this is interesting. So this uh, is how it should always have been done. It's but historically the bridge driver happened like it did. I haven't done the uh, archaeology to look up the early commits. If there's some explanation on why it was done this way, I assume mm -hmm. that it was easy to get started and the problems only became apparent over time, but then the driver was already there and kind of working and yeah. So so, so I, I want to ask this as an IPv4 guy because I don't have the luxury yeah. of IPv6 yet, maybe one day. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, it would be basically if I have the, let's say the ETH zero interface, which is my public interface, correct? Yes. And I have my bridge zero, which is for my mm -hmm. internal networking for my Beehive VMs and my GLs. Mm -hmm. I would do. Um, you would if, let me do. I, I would uh, do if config bridge zero add member ETH zero, but I would set my public IP address on my bridge interface. Exactly. Okay. So EM zero up, bridge zero create, and then bridge zero add member EM zero but then set the IP address on the bridge itself. Regardless if this is IPv6 or IPv4, yes, it this, matter, this, this would be the correct way. Yes, this is the correct way. Okay. The, the physical interface has to be up because mm -hmm. otherwise it's basically logically unconnected interface. Mm -hmm. And the bridge, uh, if you don't put it up before you... Um, Edit so you can uh, do in FreeBSD the really clean configuration 
would be to set the so-called create arcs. So you would do yes. something like this. So this RC this RC. interfaces yeah. plus equals uh, bridge zero. And then uh, this RC create arcs. I think it's arcs and not arc, but I'm not certain. Um, bridge zero. Well, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. But that's written and documented in the rc.conf man page. Yep. Mm -hmm. Zero. Okay. Let's it's create find. arcs. Yeah. So the, my example co is correct. And this makes sh sure that basically the uh, uh, net if uh, script does the equivalent or it builds up the argument line to d run this command. Um, So this isn't atomic at the system call level, but it's as close as you can get. Mm -hmm. And only after the interface has been added, you want to configure the bridge up or implicitly turn it up by adding addresses to it. Because I think as soon as the bridge has been up, if it doesn't have a member uh, interface, to inherit a MAC address from, uh, and then it will generate one. And the generated ones use a 24-bit well-known prefix and the hash of some values for the remaining 24 bits. And 24 bits randomness isn't enough to get um, away with it because you will encounter in big out deployments over time hash collisions. And then you would put the um, tap or VM net um, Beehive interfaces as members, making sure to never remove the ethernet interface from the bridge. It would be, I guess, if config um, uh, bridge zero equals, would that be correct? Yes, that's co a correct syntax to add static uh, IPv4 addresses. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, understandable. And uh, this would be the proper way to do it persistently. Yes, so SysRC for the uh, Illumo S uh, users is a shell script, which is part of a FreeBSD base system to treat the rc.conf file as a key value store where you can write to variables and the plus equals treats all words in a variable as a ordered set so that you can append something to the end of the list of words or yes. remove something out of the list of words. Right. Okay. Which... This, is, this is very, very interesting. But my, my, another question that I do have is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so let's say, um, I don't think that would be possible. Would it be possible to not add? Yeah, I mean, you could not add the EM0 if you're doing netting. Yeah, obviously. Um, exactly. Yeah. Then you would, um, if you want to, if you're interested in, in this, I've done something else, which I prefer, and that's to get rid of the layer two bridging so that all the Beehive guests are isolated on layer two and have the host run as an IPv6 router. Okay. Uh, for my lab setup, I'm running IPv6 only, which is sometimes annoying when you can't clone from GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> but I should just add uh, NAT64 and DNS64. But the nice thing about this is that um, then all the guests are isolated. And there is no shared layer two for one guest to mess with the other one on. I guess Twitter also doesn't have IPv6. Hmm? I, I think Twitter also. Yeah, but have. Uh, I don't care about uh, re reading uh, Twitter on the server. Obviously, yeah. Alan's latest uh, brain fart. 
<laughs> um, on my virtual machines. So, any labs that have especially. Okay, that, that sounds awesome. That does sound... And if you were, for example, to use a VNet enabled jail, then you would put one end of an e pair, Ethernet pair, a virtual crossover cable pair on the bridge and put the other one in the yeah. uh, VNet enabled jail as its connection to the outside world. Okay. Uh, Jan, can I offer up a uh, an rc.conf uh, variable config? Uh, sure, I've already pasted, uh, copy and pasted something to the chat. I, it's very similar, but it, it might provide a little bit uh, uh, more information. I've had issues with this stuff in the past. That's the only reason I'm offering. Sure, well, do share. Uh, Let me did, did see just where stop any discussion yeah. about this. It's just that I get annoyed when bug reports for this are closed by people who don't understand the IPv6 link scoping. Let's see what you're doing there. Yes, you're, so you're creating bridge one and two tab interfaces. Uh, you're raising the MTU. Yeah, and I, I'm i offering up the create on the, the ARG taps, uh, yeah. create ARGs, uh, because if you do this and they're not up, then things don't work. And I spent uh, a lot of time um, chasing that down over the years. Have you, are you, have you um, set the CCTL so that top interfaces are up as soon as they're opened? So that as soon as the character devices are open? Because you're supposed yeah. to do that for behind. I, I actually do do that now, yes. And the other problem is, especially if you're using a routed setup, is that if a top interface is closed, uh, it goes link state down, and then the routes, are, uh, especially the indirect ones, are removed because the interface for them is lost. The fix for this is to use uh, the VMNet name for the top interfaces because that changes the behavior. The interface stays link state up even after the character device has been closed. So for example, that your addresses aren't removed by the default tooling interacting with the system. Because normally, if the interface gets, gets down, uh, the addresses are removed, and then implicitly the routes uh, to, are also removed because the next hop for the routes has been removed. And the uh, fix for this is really just to um, call your devices VMNet, which is the same top driver. It just changes its behavior in this minute detail. Um, and it also avoids colliding with other uh, software using tab interfaces, fighting over who gets tab one, tab zero, and so on. <laughs> because you have two index namespaces doing it that way. And nothing except for maybe ancient ports of VMware to FreeBSD uh, will battle you for VMNet interfaces. The Beehive has in practical terms, uh, exclusive um, use of the index namespace for VMNet interfaces because nothing else will create a top interface by that name by default. Something else you can do, which I found useful, is to create and rename the interfaces to driver name, dash, and then the VM name because by staying under the prefix of the driver name, um, the de a single dash, and then the guest name, I've deconflicted the name space from, uh, from other users because they will just not create something named VMnet dash guest name. And by embedding the guest name into the interface name, you avoid uh, having to map them and know, oh, top so-and-so is this guest. Instead, it's uh, just an embedding. The downside is that interface names on FreeBSD 
are restricted to 15 uh, characters and a null byte. So if you remove the v quite long VM net dash prefix on that, you are restricting the, your remaining significant part of the name because you would either have to truncate or hash it. Hashing kind of works, but it's annoying to deal with because you then again have to, at least in one direction, use the script. In the other one, you can't really invert the hash if it's worth anything. Truncation, OK, but it's no longer unique, which has its own. So just restricting your guests to short names is, in my experience, the least painful way. Uh, so in production use, I actually uh, randomly allocate the tap device and I set the MAC addresses to match. I think we talked about this a week or two ago. Um, yeah. I have a process where the MAC address follows the VM. That makes total sense in production and it's a good idea. And thus, when I create a tap device, the, uh, the, I set the MAC. Um, oh. And I set them back for the internal uh, yeah. side of it also with an additional bit set so I can actually map back and forth between uh, the yep. device on the at the hypervisor side. I can map easily between the MAC address scene versus uh, the mm -hmm. guest on the other side. I do something similar. And one of the nice things is that the uh, at least previously Linux and so on use the same algorithm for deriving the IPv6 link local address from the MAC address. Ah, okay. Uh, so that if you know the MAC address of the guest, you kn you always know its uh, IPv6 link local address, which can then be used to use the SSH proxy command mode to use the uh, Instead of logging into the host and then SSH, uh, using some special command from there, you can just log in via SSH and basically do the equivalent of running netcat and then having an end-to-end -end encrypted connection. Nice. So instead of using something like IPNAT uh, and forwarding the host connection on address, I could... Okay, that's a good idea. What I'm doing is I just update the ETC hosts, or if you want to be, go, be a bit more fanciful, there are in the FreeBSD ports collections alternative uh, NSS uh, name providers where you can have uh, additional um, host files effectively using this model and the normal uh, default get other info and so on still works so that you don't have to update the etc hosts file but can have an additional file uh, which is only used by beehive uh, but if you know the prefix and so on you can of course also put in the uh, uh, stateless auto configuration uh, address derived using eui 64 from the mac address again if your guests use a stateless auto configuration with EUI 64. If they start using stable private addresses or something, you're out of luck. But as far as I know, no operating system does this to the degree that they refuse to respond to the link local address derived from the MAC address. So even if you have uh, privacy addresses enabled, you can still reach the guest via IPv6 link local. Uh, where, what's also useful is that this name embedding works for the virtual null modem device driver, so NMDM. And mm -hmm. for me, you don't have to use an index, anything between the driver name and the AB to tell the ends apart uh, is allowed. So you can just, as soon as you open one end of the NMDM device, the other one is uh, implicitly cloned uh, on first use. Correct. Removed. I make use of in production. I actually uh, use SOCAT and embed that within Tmux. And then I have tools that can uh, put and get keys into the yep. uh, Tmux set. It works quite okay. well. The nice thing about this is that you can make, then you make use, basically have a jail with no networking, use the uh, PEM jail module to have a 
an SSH connection, come in, get put into a persistent jail, and that jail has access to only the, the one side of the NMDM device, so that you can have the whatever you're using, SOCAT, CU, uh, Pico.com, or whatever is running to attach to the console, is running in a, locked into a jail with both IPv4 and IPv6 disabled, but you can still use the connected socket, which was used to SSH in, because file descriptors are capabilities. So you don't have to have IPv4 or IPv6 enabled to keep using an existing file descriptor. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, I wanted you to share the example with the disabling TSO and LRO. I don't think you have to disable hardware checksumming on most cards or VLAN filtering. Unless you want to pass through tech frames depending on the driver uh, without having to create the VLAN tech interfaces on the bridge. Oh, and that's something else to watch out for, uh, at least in free and open BSD. If you then start putting VLAN inter interfaces as members on bridges, the spanning tree uh, frames aren't set up correctly because now you're basically speaking spanning tree uh, inside the VLAN tag while the standard being designed by switch game guys basically puts the VLAN inside the packet instead of putting a VLAN header outside. So that if you have, I've seen this uh, break um, Aruba and HP switches completely where, and others will just no, don't understand it and will just pass it through and others will just turn off the port and you can get really nice systems which will never converge and either be uh, in a looping state or in a uh, blocking state. I've had, yes, I've had issues with uh, the networking group where they run uh, uh, the BDU guard, I believe it is. Yeah. And if you're not careful, um, the our, is our rapid spanning tree enabled. Will go external and they'll shut the port down. Painful. Yeah, even worse if uh, you have a loop which doesn't get detected. Uh, because the switch doesn't understand your intention, because what then is happening that the B, uh, the BPDU uh, frame is not supposed to be encapsulated. It's supposed to de be descriptive of the VLAN. Yes. Per VLAN spanning tree. And you're not supposed to run non-VLAN array spanning tree inside VLANs. Jan. This is the kind of thing where I'm gonna I'm gonna put words in Michael's mouth. Um, I would you know this is the kind of thing where having documentation on the wiki or in the handbook for the how to set stuff up like this would probably be a massive help to a lot of people and might actually improve chances of FreeBSD being used um, in various locations because some of this stuff is very hard won. And I cannot, I cannot tell you the number of times it's, you know, well, we don't have this problem with that other operating system. Yeah, in my uh, use case, the solution was just to get rid of the layer two and just run a, a routed network, run OSPF, and everything worked as you wanted it by having OSPF over IPsec encrypted GRE tunnels, uh, just stop trying to extend layer two across sites, even if they're only a few kilometers apart. Because layer two, a shared layer two is a shared failure domain. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I get it. Um, Thank you, Jan, for your input. It's, uh, it's, 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 thank you. <laughs> but one of the things I expect we will run into uh, if 
b bigger production sites are enticed to roll out a beehive on FreeBSD is that while at least the basic bridge driver in FreeBSD has m seen a massive improvement in FreeBSD 13.1 when it was uh, rewritten to make use of epoch so that you can use multiple uh, cores per bridge instead of having a single mutex per bridge is that just as you shared in your example line right now you basically have to uh, lobotomize your network card for things to work out well part of that is for tcp dump and related friends mm, but all the tso and lo is for getting reasonable throughput or even getting yeah. it working at all because basically what will happen is that udp stops working in any reasonable sense and basically tcp retransmits will slowly probe to the packet rate where the hardware slash firmware packet rewriting stops so basically your network will slow down so much that no single flow is uh, aggregated into bigger packets so basically you're limiting yourself to a few kilobits per flow uh, which is barely enough to recover using ssh <laughs> if you're patient yeah one of the other things i mentioned a couple of weeks ago is on most of the systems that i do production um, where performance is expected yeah um almost all of them are using uh, PFVF, um, IO, IOV control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, so uh, you're using hardware um, support for virtualizing the NIC, and it does make a difference. Of course, it does. Uh, on the only lab machine I have access to or had access to where I could play with this, I found out that my old card had only so few. Uh, transmit and receive queues to work with that basically yeah. I have to run the guests uh, in a single queue per direction configuration, which negates most of the advantages on the very old slow 2.5 something gigahertz Xeons I was using. And the newer bridge driver just um, could push a higher, using a lot more cycles, but could push more because it used all the 24 or so available logical cores to do it per guest. Of course, the total system throughput was lower, but the peak throughput per guest was higher this way. Yes. And you can't really dynamically redistribute the queues at runtime. Yeah. But if you have good NICs, this isn't that much of a problem because if you have a nice 25 or gig or faster Chelsea or Mellanox, whatever Nick, they probably have enough queues to get you a few dozen guests with good network performance. I typically don't go over 16 for whatever yes. it's worth. That's my or queues per guest. managerially mandated value that I've come up with. So no more than 16 guests per host at least for that card for that interface okay mm -hmm. yeah makes sense uh, after all virtual uh, functions are actual hardware so somewhere in the ASIC there is a set of memory map registers per queue <laughs> it's a finite re resource yes mm. So is there any, any uh, 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 how do I phrase this? Hey, what else can we talk about, Jan? What else is out there that someone might want to hear? Uh, what someone may want to look into is uh, getting uh, getting the existing um, net map support for Beehive to the point where the mem copy uh, doesn't happen in the Beehive process, but in the kernel, no VMM code. Mm. Because right now we put the rings of the net map file descriptor, we, you mmap each ring, 
have a bunch of memory map doorbell registers, but the read write position in the, in the th is not empty or is full flag. Uh, and the interesting part is that it does work, but you're basically doing mem copy uh, from the netmap pop to the guest wing buffer in user space. So you get some batching, but that's about it. So there's a lot of performance to be gained there by getting better batching, uh, multi queue support, and uh, moving the mem copy from user space to the kernel where uh, even just because it would avoid this context switching overhead of switching into the beehive uh, emulation thread, doing a mem copy and immediately con descheduling the thread, hoping that the next thing to pick up the CPU will be the uh, vCPU handling the traffic in there. So yeah. Uh, what kind of CPU socket info are you interested in? The just um, the top, which is printed during boot and accessible via the CTLs? So on, on CCTL, I can print the model. I can print the number of CPUs, but I want to also see like how many actual CPUs there are. And there cause, is because this is because this is you know it, 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 it's 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 a dual socket machine. But does FreeBSD print that info? Yes, FreeBSD does know that you want to look at this to CTL. Interesting. I could not find it for the love of God. I I don't know where it is. I'm assuming it's in HW in hardware, but I could not. No, find it. it's in kernel kern dot chat dot topology underscores spec. Oh. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Um, uh, Apology. Spec. I think it's... Got it. And it's an know, XML file. Well, Great. Yeah, that's for awesome. For example, it could look something like this. For a small six-core CPU. If they were right. Oh, is it that one? Here you are. Thank you. So this is an example of how it looks on a six core uh, desktop class Ryzen CPU with hyper threading. So hmm. you can see the different levels of caching. On a bigger system, you may see another level, basically one per socket. Uh, and if you want to see a patholo almost pathologically bad system design, I can run the same command on a first generation epic where it looks like this. Let me share that. This is how it looks on a 32 core uh, uh, first generation epic where each uh, compute die is its own numa domain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fascinating. Because basically the first generation uh, epic is a bit of a hard to optimize for target system because mm -hmm. each uh, quarter of a socket has its own pair of memory channels attached to a memory controller and last level cache segment. Mm -hmm. And you have the infinity uh, fabric, how AMD calls it. It's basically a, a hop by hop network where I think it is uh, even the diagonal even, con I think it's a point to point connection between, so basically you have three links inside the socket to the other four computers. So it's a full mesh inside the compute. And then if you have, want to access another socket, you first have basically to address the right computer and then use the fragment of the socket interconnect connecting these corresponding compute dice. So if you have a dual socket system, you get even, even double that. 
And this can be, for example, a problem uh, if because uh, ZFS to this day isn't NUMA aware, at least uh, in FreeBSD and Linux, uh, where it will say, no, no, there is no real memory pressure. I will keep growing the um, arc because there's like 40 gigs of unused uh, memory in the system. But yeah, but there are these one or two NUMA domains under severe memory pressure. So the kernel will keep on uh, basically shooting down the arc, which can get uh, as bad as effectively live locking the system there. You run top debugging it. If you end top, uh, you will find out if you still have another terminal that the uh, shell you expect to come back is com not just paged out, but the full process has been swapped out with not a single page remaining. So really swapped out, not just demand paged out. And the kernel says, no, no, I'm still under severe memory pressure. I'm not uh, even thinking about swapping in a completely swapped out process. So yeah, uh, and you keep on losing uh, processes to this as the uh, unloaded CPUs in the memory stuff NUMA domains keep on stealing works for, uh, in the form of threads from the uh, less pressured NUMA domains until the system recovers. And uh, if you have a problem like one of the dims in one of the NUMA domains isn't plugged in, you have a half-sized NUMA domain, so a badly unbalanced systems and this pathological state becomes permanent and the system will just not be usable until you have a properly balanced uh, just, uh, memory configuration. So either replace the uh, missing DIM or uh, rip out one out of every other NUMA domain. Has anybody discussed making it NUMA aware? I mean, that seems like a pretty big oversight. Uh, yeah, um, it has been discussed, but the problem is that yeah, the portability layer doesn't know about this, and then it would in percolate through the code in a lot of places. And yes, it, would, it is an oversight, and it's not that much of an issue on a balanced NUMA system, but on an unbalanced one it's deadly and the only thing you can do really is use a loader tunable on FreeBSD to disable NUMA awareness lose a painful 15 or so percent real world throughput on the system and use it that way until you get hardware replacements and as far as I know this problem exists to this day but I've last encountered it on 12.2 or so So, as far as I know, this problem is still open for anyone willing to tackle it. One of the FreeBSD specific things I could uh, show, uh, if we don't have anything else, uh, is that um, I have found a nice uh, usable way of um, utilizing the CAM uh, target layer to uh, provide VIT or SCSI uh, device, block devices. Uh, to guests and the nice thing about this is that I can hot plug and unplug uh, block devices and in theory streamers Wait, and other devices. I have a question about that. I do have a question about that. So I, I've been suffering for a couple of hours today. C can you hear me? Your voice just- Yes, moved. we can hear you. Okay, great. So, um, uh, okay. So I have this very large machine. Uh, Define very large. We find very large, uh, 256 cores. It's, it's a nice machine. We just got it today, basically. Um, nice. And it has a, uh, it has also a SAS device uh, that's connected to 12 disks. And uh, I, I think either my BIOS configuration is wrong, which means I have to go mm -hmm. to the uh, 
data center tomorrow to do whatever I need. Or, well, or why? Uh, here's why. Because when I do... Don't you have all of band access? The what? Can't you just use uh, the uh, BMC to flash? Oh, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't configured stuff yet. I haven't like... It's, oh. It's it's very raw right now. Otherwise, I I should have just connected to the IPMI and the BBA. On a box that scale, get something like a cheap microtech or something and throw it in the back of a box so that you don't have to pay an extra rack unit for it and have your own VPN endpoint mm -hmm. so that you can uh, use WireGuard to access or some IPsec or whatever right. works for you to uh, access the out-of-band management network. You mean like flash the uh, out-of-band management system to have like a proper operating system on it? No, that's sadly out of reach for now. Okay. But uh, put your own reasonably trusted small embedded system there as VPN endpoint. So okay. for example, I've put in a, in the past, Ubiquiti or your Microtech hardware. Okay. And some of the, the, the smaller can gear. A, Jan, can you pop a web link up for him? That would probably be easiest for him. Yeah. Something like this. Copy a link. There and uh, I don't know about this one, but others. Uh, are also uh, USB powered, so you don't need a brick. You can just steal your mm -hmm. uh, power from a host USB port mm -hmm. if they're powered uh, when the system is shut down. Yeah, and connect this to the management interface. Yes, and then just use whatever VPN you want yeah. to uh, have this be your... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, that's understandable. So the, the problem that I'm actually having, and I don't know if this is a problem mm -hmm. or not. So in DMessage, I can see yeah. that the SASs are recognized as SES 0, 1, and 2. As that's well as, the enclosure. That's the enclosure. As well as MR SAS 0, 1, and 2. That's uh, the controller. That's the controller. But I do not see the disks. I assume that I should have seen like MFI or DA um, interfaces. Are you running stable or current? I'm always running release. <laughs> okay, next question. Do so, you know which firmware is flashed on your uh, controllers? Maybe they are flashed using, uh, with the... Uh, so, uh, MSS is an MSS. And you may need the new driver. It's not in release. That depends on how new the chip is. I can give you live access to the server if you want, as in like. Yeah, but let's do that share. after we're recording. Uh, exactly. Yeah, but I, I think um, this would be interesting because because it's it's a it's a pretty new machine, and I'm wondering. Uh, it is. Uh, can you share the output from uh, from uh, PCI conv dash LV? Of course, of course. PCI conv dash LV grep. Uh, let's grep for anything that's. A, LSI or did we rename the vendor string as well? A3, let's say, dash I SAS. Something like this. Something like that. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, yeah, yep, I have a similar interface. One sec. Because uh, oftentimes you will find servers using quite old chips or mm. Mm. So it may be that you can just use the release drivers as is without building any. Trick doing any trickery if it's. I see, I see, I see what you mean. Oh, okay, I see. Then. You may have to pull a, a driver, but there shouldn't be too much which has changed. So uh, you may just be able to pull the driver directly. And from. you may also want to run a PCI conf dash dash LV and pull yeah. out the actual uh, chipset. Yes. Well, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, so what is this? Uh, oh, this is a tri-mode card. Okay, so... Uh, this this is very liable, 3408... Uh, and and I, I can see the numbers inside the manual pages, by the way. So um, it, it says that it's supported. Okay, the question is uh, do, maybe... So I'm not familiar with the tri-mode cards, but on the older ZUS, as basically... 
by mode cards, if you want it, would want to call them, so using the no new terminology is that uh, there's two f lines of firmware, the annoying uh, hardware rate slash firmware yeah, accelerated rate, and then you have to basically label the disks and they're bound to the rate controller, and you really don't want to do that on a FreeBSD system with ZFS. There are it's supposedly... A mode card, you should be able to put it in, uh, in pass-through mode. Yeah, yeah. pass-through mode. mode. But you have to do that... Per and then there are, at least in the early cards, having a pass-through mode. The pass-through mode isn't full features and full performance. So you lose like 1,000 or 10,000 IOPS, depending on how fast your devices are. But, um, because compared to reflashing the card with the um, IT mode, basically the HPA only uh, firmware. And for some annoying reason, be, uh, Windows, um, <laughs> the vendors like to uh, ship their hardware with the stupid slow rate firmware, which is in no way able even to just keep up with cheap Zeta SSDs in all uh, internal 24 or so SAS base. If you just put a one cheap one terabyte Zeta SSD in each of the 24 base, you're totally limited by the HBA um, CPU rate engine just. Do you know the actual card that's in this thing? No, uh, not yet. I... Yeah, that he just shared his output. No, he's he's showing you the he's showing you the the device, right? Mm -hmm. and the SAS thirty four the... zero eight is a um, is the chipset. Yeah, the, which is the relevant part for judging its. Yeah, but but it you, you can map that back to the card and you can figure out exactly what it does. Um, you may be able to use something like is an MSS CTL or something or MPR, MPS, whatever. There is MP MPR something util. util. Yeah, there's MPR util, and if I do MPR util show all show adapter. Uh, show adapter. Yeah, whatever, what, what, whichever I do, it keeps saying no such file or directory, right? But what yeah, I do that's see totally because my... it's for an other related driver. I see. Try the MPS util or... MPS util? Wait, yeah, the MP... Okay, I never you saw... You have the to MPS use the command line tool for the driver which did attach to your device. I see, I see. So... For example, MPS is for the older one, MPR is for the slight newer one, but I'm afraid you are one generation ahead of the tools I'm familiar with. Yeah, I think he I... needs to actually download the MPI 3MR is that in ports? No, uh, Broadcom. Download the driver sources from their site, compile it, and install it. And they, they provide I, FreeBSD sources? Yes. Yes. I know in addition to what Jan is saying about performance with the between the two firmwares, I know on the Illumo side, we uh, the IT firmware is just easier to manage yes. because RAID on top of RAID is silliness. The pass-through mode really exposes the raw storage. You enable yeah. it on the card, and there is no metadata on the disks. You get all sectors. So, so uh, uh, taking into uh, mind that this is a pretty mm -hmm. fresh server that I just configured yep. today, and I'm going to be the, the dictator of the machine, which means I can do whatever mm -hmm. I want. Based on what you guys said, you're saying that the most sense way is to go back tomorrow to the data center and change the configuration to be in pass-through mode so I can get even, for example, smart data. Um, yep. In pass-through mode? No. The best way is if you can dumb it down to the point where it doesn't even offer to act as weight controller okay. and just allows you pure block access to all physically attached devices. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. the way you want your storage controller to operate if you run ZFS yes. or any other kind of software storage solution. Is, is, that, is, that, is, is that the HBA mode? I, I forgot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're looking for. Um, it'll be a firmware ending in dash IT and um, is that still some... true for the uh, tri mode cards? If he has a tri mode card, it should actually be built in. Exactly. Oh, okay. I think you just have to enter the option ROM and uh, switch correct. the mode over. 
Okay. So then I'm was wrong. the option wrong? Um, during the five to ten minutes that box takes to uh, boot mm -hmm. and power on, <laughs> the, that's <Yeah>. generous. <laughs> that yeah. is generous. That is but generous. The cold boot, I've seen systems on that scale take 15 minutes because then it turns out uh, the vendor released a firmware update. The reason was that they were initializing all ECC bits from one CPU core, even across sockets. So you had a nice big multi socket server, and yes. the CPU would go along, initialize all memory controllers, and then initial, uh, basically write zeros to all physical DRAM addresses. So that the ECC is valid. It's oh God! Ridiculous. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, got it. Uh, well, I mean, the boot speed is not my problem because this is for scientists, and you know it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I, underst I, I, I understood the, the situation about the HBA. Yeah, I, I've, I've never worked with this super micro BIOS before, so it's kind of new to me. But I'll do that today, um, to, tomorrow, and uh, maybe share my news in, in two weeks. And the, the, question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, have you already installed IPMI tool? No, I did not. I recommend that you do. And if you are willing to risk exposing this, it may already be exposed by default. Okay. Uh, what's happening is that uh, normally one of the onboard network cards on a um, super microsystem, unless there is a link active on the dedicated management uh, copper ethernet port, mm -hmm. uh, it will fail over to allow via some um, horrible I2C connection between the PMC and the NIC, the NIC to claim the MAC address and then have the NIC just proxy the traffic. Yeah, got it, got it, got it, yep. So it may, without rewiring, be possible to access the out-of-band management if this port is active. I well, I, I don't know, because I just installed IPMI tool, and when I run it, it yeah. says cannot open device. Oh, but I think and I now you to want to load the, the IPMI device. Yeah, of course. You do IP... this by running these commands. Commands, as in plural. Mm -hmm. Yes. You add it to the list to make it uh, persistent, and then you run... Uh, KLD load work. all the IPMI KLD uh, stat. It's ready. Should be this. IPMI tool. IPMI tool is not complaining anymore. Just FYI. Yeah, because now you have the kernel module providing the IPMI zero device. That's yes. cute. Okay, so should I be uh, a uh, hero? And now, as root on the host, you can run IPMI tool LAN print. LAN print. Got it. Yeah. Yes, remote management from Russia with love. Um, <laughs> you know, the, um, the maintainer uh, emigrated uh, last year and was still bent on GitHub and. Oh, I can see. I can see the IP address of the uh, thing of the uh, IPMI interface. Maybe I can. Yes. See it. And yes. by default, it just tries to get its address via DHCP. That's what it did. On a new enough system, you may even have IPv6 enabled by default in the management, depending on vendor. Actually, let's check that. That might be a good question, but no, I don't see any IPv6. Which can be very useful, uh, again, to access using uh, link local addresses. So now I probably... You know the management password. It, usually it's on a tag. Yes, uh, finally. It used to be just admin admin. No, not anymore. Not it used <laughs> to be on Supermicro for... Decades, okay. kind of the kind of the same as Dell with you know whatever it was root. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Root and admin, lowercase. Don't remember. Anyone, the types of things you do in any, university, right? Anyone remembers how to open the SSH uh, thing? The what do you call it? The um, oh, the, um, you do tilde. The thing, and then control tile tile uh, dash to disconnect or what are you looking for tile tile question mark it has to be on the beginning of a new, new line so you type enter yeah. twiddle dot 
enter, then exactly, enter, twiddle, dot is disconnect, enter, dot twiddle, disconnect. question marks tells you what's possible. Oh, there you go. And there if you, you are nested, you have to use enter, twiddle, twiddle, whatever, one yeah. twiddle per hop. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's tilde, and then I can do, let's say, I can add a, uh, what do you call that? A forwarded connection, for example. Uh, right? Yeah, but why not just use the command line on a fresh SSH connection? Because because I'm lazy and I I love yeah, to look and... fancy. <laughs> so if he has the IP address of his um his BMC, yeah. he should you... he should be able can... to open a web browser to it and get an yeah, HTTP. But he's not on site. That it, from the system you've used to run IPMI to LAN print. Can you ping the IP address uh, printed in the output of IPMI to LAN? Yes, print? I can. Yes, I can. Can you uh, run something like netcat uh, dash v dash? Whoa! 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 Whoa. 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 Whose dog, dog is that? Just... Someone has commentary on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is my great. I, I have a great Pyrenees. And uh, something else you may be able to do if it's enabled is to SSH in using password-based SSH with the same credentials configured. Uh, if there are none, you know, you don't need to know the IPMI root password, oh, operator password, to change it if you have root on the host. It can be done via the uh, IPMI, LAN, uh, IPMI user commands in IPMI tool. There you go. So IPMI you user, IPMI, IPMI user list. User I list. highly recommend you add a user, not modify the the admin user. Yes, you, and after what you want to just for reasons you probably want to once you've found out what you want and have it working, you want to disable the admin. Oh, interesting. Uh, because that's the default user everyone will be attacking. And if you know that you're not using it, every anyone trying to connect to it is automatically considered an attacker. And you get a better um, signal to noise ratio that someone is um, inside your management network trying things. So you may actually want to uh, point your IPMI syslog output somewhere and capture the syslog from it. Okay, so I would do IPMI user in and a lot on uh, login attempts for the admin user. I see, I see. Okay, well this is actually very interesting. This is actually oh, so I can like IPMI user set name. And then the user yeah, ID. Yeah, you have name. to, I think, you set the index ID. So yep, yep. But the, it's, it's all with the indexes. This is actually a very, very easy tool to use. So then we put something uh, like And then don't, don't just generate a pseudo random password of, I think, what's it, 10 or 16? Uh, just accept that the limit is 16 because of the old 16. protocols. Yeah. Yeah, in theory, it's also possible to have 20, but that causes some problems. With some tools you may want to use, and a random 16 byte password as that's the ID. Good. And after the, the ID, we we'll put the password, there's the password, and then we type in 16. So and then something we to look out for is that use the <laughs> proper password manager and have unique passwords because otherwise decommissioning becomes fun. <laughs> because the ciphers mandatory in the specification require the BMC to store the plain text passwords to compute the challenges for challenge response authentication. So, so inside he, the BMC, there is some flash which stores all the passwords you configure in plain text, which can easily be extracted by anyone with a bus pirate to read out the SPI flash. Or at least on the ones I've seen. I haven't seen any attacks of this nature in a few years, but I don't know if it's still that easy, but it used to be able if you could read an SPI serial flash and knew which offsets to read, you could just um, remove exact 
hopefully and try oh, the uh, try uh, HTTP and the IP address. It won't, yeah. maybe doing something funny there. Yeah, it it wants to redirect to port eighty. That's why. That, yeah, that's, that's exactly. It always tries to redirect to uh, TLS. To TLS. So you're yeah, so it always to... tries to redirect you to port four four three. I see. Got it. Got uh, it. If you access it via HTTP, unless you disable that, that has finally changed. Even if it's a self signed certificate and only opportunistic encryption. Well, and... let's let's see how lucky we are today to play with this. So I'm going to do this on ATAT. There you go. Show details. Now, oh, uh, God yeah, damn. certificate. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, this is yeah, IPMI. Yeah, club. Uh, no, no, that's possible. View certificate. Yep. Pop it up and change your trust setting. Oh, is this how it works? Oh, that's cute. When using the certificate, yeah. always, always trust. trust. Okay. Okay. And then it should be possible Refresh. to reload. Should it is what? Very, very interesting. Did I miss? Uh, you can visit this website now. Always trust. Yeah, I will okay, just... Okay, click okay. No, that's the second okay. one. You can visit this website. This website. Visit website. There you um, go. And now you should be able to access the your nice big box. This is a very, very cute technique. Thank you for the IPMI tool, gentlemen. And you should be able to get a uh, console in here also. Yeah, one of the nice things, if you don't want to deal with this, is that... Uh, you can enable, I don't know if it's enabled by default on Supermicro, I mean, uh, you can enable SSH. And then you can use an SSH in. On Dell, for example, the SSH is really pleasant to use because there is no noticeable input lag, unless in some, uh, unlike some other vendors, like cheaper ones like AS Rack or something, they mm -hmm. have half a second of input lag on the SSH, but not on the HTML5 mm -hmm. remote. Are you familiar with the Supermicro Update Manager tool called SUM? S U M. Personally, I am not. I I I, I try. I've tried to ignore Supermicro all my life. So, well, if you, um, I'm a given the class of this piece of hardware. I am assuming, possibly incorrectly, that it was purchased with what are referred to as the OOB uh, licenses which it means be, it's like able 20 to bucks more or so. utility and use it with this machine. Mm. Yes, then you, uh, I think on some modern system, it's included by default on certain other bots. Um, Interestingly, it keeps the user, saying that my password uh, is Maybe old. the user ID is disabled. No, no, I did enable it. I did enable it. You're going to probably want to use the admin ID here the first time. The problem oh. for the admin ID, you you have to know the password or change it. I can change it. And yeah, just use web interface to manage it. But using SSH, you can SSH in, and then it's something like system one, uh, in, uh, system one slash sol one. Yep, something, and one. then you can get a serial over LAN via SSH through the HPA. So that you, for example, can use a Microtech or other low power device. You can hide behind the device in a rack mm -hmm. in a colocation and use that as jump host. Oh, to the here's, without. here's hmm? the interesting one. Uh, the there... admin is uh, written all uppercase. Mm -hmm. uh, the username is case sensitive. The, another interesting thing is that I, I don't see any privileges because it, sa it says 0x00. While um, it is, it's supposed to have some kind of it's possible that level. maybe the command line tool. Uh, oh, it looks like you're getting somewhere. I'm getting now somewhere. You I am getting in. How cute is that? Configuration. And we want to uh, do what do we want to do? We users. Want... Yeah. Is this alphabetical? I don't get this. No, it's not. It's not alphabetical. Where the it's, fuck are we uh, it's random. Probably <laughs> out of when it was added. And then, uh, yeah, you can just click on this user and then uh, modify user. And I swear to God, this is like... Set its password again and give it uh, full administrator, administrator privileges. 
May, it looks like awesome. maybe the privileges didn't stick or something because IPMI tool yeah. save. save. Log out. It says it's okay. Yeah, Let's no log that. out. Let's do that. Then try your user again. Ah, all is good. So uh, there's a uh, big exclamation mark in the upper right corner. So the something, something it doesn't like. Maybe it's just the chassis intrusion detection switch, which hasn't been reset. System critical. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah, click on it. Uh, it's not cl clicking. Like this is not what clicking? I... Yeah. Okay, then go under server health, uh, hardware info. Server health. Yeah, and there you want the sensor reading, yeah. something, something. Um, why is it not loading? Maybe you have to look under Probably side. sensor and readings on the readings. side. Yeah. And you have event log because, and I assume it will just be some chassis intrusion detection. Yeah. Yes. Chassis intrusion. Yes. Yeah, so the, why does uh, that happen? Because this you had the machine was open. opened while, uh, while under, uh, there was power uh, and then it detects this. Yes. Yes. And you yes. have to reset that. Okay, got, okay, I'll do that when I'm in the DC. That sounds fun. So, so you're saying it's I can just one button up. up in the upper right corner, scroll up, upper right corner, and then it will be happy. No, no, scroll up, there. upper right corner, <laughs> intrusion yeah. reset. That's it. If you, so now you have cleared this, and the complaint should disappear. And then it should there be possible, go. given the price class of this hardware, to flash firmware updates to the arts and so on, the under maintenance. To basically, it's probably under the yeah. BIOS update. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but here's here's a question. Upload BIOS updates over the web interface. Okay, here's a question. So maybe I can also change the the thing. What was it called? The uh, the ah, uh, god damn it. The, uh, st uh, the storage the information. Password for mode and exit. Yes, you can. The way to do this uh, is to go under remote control. Remote control. And then you want to uh, remote launch console. SOL. Yeah, that one. Launch SOL, right? I remember and that. And then something else to do, which they support, is you can also attach via uh, IPMI tool on SSH. Okay. Uh, so SSH did, into the host system. Did it just itself, download, and then it use download IP Java? Are you fucking kidding? It just No, downloaded. that isn't the only way to do it. Um, <laughs> at least it shouldn't be. Currently Why is there no wait? <laughs> or HTML? Um, set the, uh, there. Please click here. Please click here. I'm clicking here. Yes. Yeah, there we go. HTML5. Yes, that's so much. There you go. There, uh, okay. It may it, not it, work completely in. The, uh, in, uh, in it's okay. In, um, Safari. You may have to use Chrome or Firefox. No, it, it actually worked, except it did a pop-up, so uh, you guys for, would be able yeah, to... See. It's a, it's a pop-up window. Yeah. You yeah. may have no. to allow it, and you yeah. can drop the top tab into the window if you want. Just open I... a new tab in the popped-up window oh, with using oh. command tab, and then you can use the tab bar, which will appear to drop it in Let's this window, see. and then we can see it. There you go. If like you want this. to share it. Yeah, there, there it is. Okay, this is very cute. This is this is not bad. I was expecting a lot worse. I mean, apologies. I've worked a lot with Cisco, so I, yeah. I feel that every interface should be from the nineties. So uh, th this is not mm -hmm. bad at all. Uh, it's, you it's... may find out the hard way uh, way that um, keyboard uh, layouts aren't really transparent. Oh, that's actually very interesting. Uh, so okay. unless you just sometimes you just have to uh, switch to a. American US keyboard layout everywhere and the PC version of that, not the Apple version. I'm always right. on that. <laughs> I assume okay, you're always on the German version. Uh, Russ, uh, I'm suffering from Stockholm syndrome. I'm for some reason my brain switches within a second or two when I'm sitting in front of a Mac with an Apple keyboard to use the German. Apple keyboard layout, which okay. is a terribly inefficient keyboard layout, but I learned ty uh, blind typing on it as a kid. And so as a child, so, I here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think, I think Apple needs just... a lot of engineers who are like not American 
No offense, guys. Because mm-hmm. every non-American keyboard on Apple is bad. The Arabic one is bad. The Armenian one is bad. Uh, every every language that I know and I use on Apple is one just bad. One of the reasons why Apple uh, layouts look the way they do is that they are very old because they were the were among the earliest ones supporting, and they basically had the Mac Roman and so on, or Mac whatever, I Mac Relic and so on layout where they wanted to enable their users using an 8-bit encoding back then to basically write for their language and the other languages in the region using Mm. a single code page. And then you have to be able to type all of that reasonably well. So for example, the Swiss users say that for the Apple layout is superior, the Swiss one, for typing, if you type a mixture of German, French, Italian, and English, uh, because you can reach everything good enough to type names, for example. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is interesting. So, the IPMI tool is not aware that admin is. No, well, the 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 actual details not, not view, not presented in the default list view. I see what you see. There's. Um, if you specify a specific user or something, so that would be uh, there. Like... This proof is the part you uh, would have to have set so that you set the privilege. I see. Well, to, I mean, th- this was uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, so I think after the call, I'll do the HBA thing and see how that goes. Because I, if I do you should Apple... now be able using the IPMI, uh, yeah, uh, you have another system on the same. Uh, link which you can uh, SSH redirect from. Unfortunately, that will be very hard for me right now because, you know, I am opening the IPMI over SSH of the machine that is Is there an other (laughs) machine in the same network which can act as proxy? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, there's not yet. This is is still in the... Yeah, it it is still in the... In the uh, the co-location. Yeah, Yeah, I'm, I'm moving it to my own data center next week. Okay. Where I will be able to do that, yeah. I was actually thinking, by the way, of running FreeBSD current on the host. Uh, I don't think that my scientists would would have much of a difference because I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving them FreeBSD release and yeah. Ubuntu GLs anyway, you know. And maybe we can use this as a community build server because I mean, come on, this thing is a monstrosity. <laughs> it 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 might be a good build server for 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 beehive testing. Okay. Um, well, thank you all. I learned a lot today, by the way. I, 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 Michael asked me to come to run the call, but I didn't imagine that I'll be learning too, this much today. Uh, this was very much fun, especially this IPMI tool. I think this is very much interesting. Yeah. LAN print apparently was the thing in here. This is very yeah. much interesting, yeah. And the interesting part is that it's enabled by default on one of the Ethernet one of ports. one of the Ethernet devices, right? Right. And yeah. Only one of the ports on most systems <laughs> acts as failure. If you go into the web interface before you get locked out in the other tab, in the other under tab. configuration, configuration, and there uh, network, network. Yeah. Um. As you can see. Uh, yeah, IPv6 is active, but uh, not provided because probably there aren't any RAT advertisements. No, no, and, this is uh, this is Armenia. No, no one down, uses uh, IPv6. You see, yeah. you can put it in a VLAN, which uh, at least pre- if you put it on a tech VLAN. Am I on, seriously on a hundred megabit connection? The access network. Well, it may re- read as that. Okay. Well, IP by you have a also... very terrible hoster. Be- no, well, the system is so new, it should be able to negotiate gigabit. Well, IPMI shouldn't need anything more than that, though. No, no, it should just uh, on the host, just uh, run IF config, exactly. Uh, and it's 100 Mac full two blocks. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> so, can you recommend that you download the Supermicro SUM tool, S U M? You can Google it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a FreeBSD version of it also, FreeBSD native. Nice. Um, you will find it very useful. It can modify the different parameters. 
Uh, you can mount remote discs, uh, you know, obvious mm -hmm. sort of boot support, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, can... I also... highly recommend you, you take a look at it. Yep. You can also uh, mount from SMB, I think only SMB V1 shares. So that... It'll do it. It'll do an HTTPS mount. HTTP. Yeah, um, oh, I, I'm just getting flashbacks from how they implemented <laughs> this in the old uh, Java interesting. version. Interesting they, thing, uh, though. They just tunnel. Interest... Sorry. I'm gonna say an interesting thing I saw go by on some of the BMC stuff when he was looking at the pass at the users at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, it did seem to say indicate the passwords are hashed. Unfortunately, it looked like they were hashed with MD5. So, yeah. The problem is that one of the ch challenge response algorithms required by IPMI requires a computation based on the plain text, which can't be pre-computed. So basically, the co connecting client gives a challenge, and then you have to compute a hash over that and the plain text in a way which you can't pre-compute a partial uh, hash state for uh, so that you can extract it. And Supermicro, like a decade ago, had a bug where if you knew the URL, you had an authentication bypass and could download the password file, including the plain text passwords, mm -hmm. if you knew the URL and the IP address. So well, that's uh, annoying. Just, yeah, that's just uh, nice to, you know, and something which not just Supermicro did, but everyone used, you, based on the same firmware they used. The um, remote storage in the Java client used to be implemented by basically proxying uh, USB packets uh, using a static key and initialization vector for AES CBC. So one of the things that I wanted to also mention is uh, these RAID controllers that we had, so mm -hmm. such as in here, I would have, mm -hmm. um, let's see which one it was. It definitely was but now that you mm -hmm. uh, SES util. Anyways, so SEL mm -hmm. util just do show. So uh, sorry, yeah, well, yeah, well, show. Mm -hmm. So one of these ones, this 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 LSI or the Broadcom or LSI or whatever it was with the other command, I think it was PCI conf dash LV uh, grep a three. For MR SAS, great. So one of these cards was heating up to 80, 90 degrees when it was running. Oh, that that seems it's... a little high. That's a bit toasty. It should so, be in the yeah, so, 80s at most, better 60s or 70s. So my vendor, he, they booted obviously Windows to see, mm -hmm. like, uh, to, to, to test the machine as soon as it arrived to the but... country. And they mm -hmm. booted Windows, and then they, the, the machine was, you know, doing all the time and then saying that I should shut down because of a heat issue. They realized mm -hmm. that it was one of these cards. I went there, and immediately I booted FreeBSD. The same thing happened. Then I go into the uh, BIOS and change, uh, I don't remember which card it was, and I change it from vendor-supplied firmware to AMI-supplied firmware. Mm -hmm. And then it immediately fixed itself. Although not so really something not you those. would want to do on a storage server, for example, on FreeBSD, and if yeah. it's a super micro box, go into the settings under configuration, a fan mode, and then there's either full speed or heavy I/O. Yes. Where? Fan, fan mode. Fan mode. And there you can. So optimal is basically okay. No, um. Full speed is obvious, just full voltage to all fans mm -hmm. and 100% PVM. Mm -hmm. Whatever this power utilization effective speed, I have no idea. And heavy IO basically run, runs the other fans except the system fan higher. Mm -hmm. So basically the CPU fan isn't... Because oftentimes yeah. with the default configuration on a storage heavy box, you will find that everything but the CPU is cooking. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. the heavy I/O uh, would, would make say. sense. Got it. Yeah, uh, but they don't have proper. Double check that if you have a dense deployment, because yeah, it can be very wasteful to just run all the fans at over speed, and then you just cycle the air too quickly through your uh, cooling, yeah. and the uh, 
data center guys will hate you. No, so that's okay. The, taking the, the, their the, nice, cool air the, the, and the electricity, it out. The electricity is paid by the government, so that's fine. <laughs> but it reduces the density of your deployment. Right. If someone right. has an inefficient old deployment with a very cold aisle and so that you don't need that high of an airflow and mm. you just configure it to basically take all the air controlled chilled air from the cold aisle and blow it barely heated into the hot aisle the uh, inefficient high density deployment yeah <laughs> so um oh my god what 819 that's the peak that's the peak yeah but that was yeah. when uh, oh no that wasn't wait was that it may be during boot when all calls are spun up yeah um no i, I think that was during testing because at the something at this you may time... want to play with is uh installed uh on the freebsd system power d no don't not on such a new system Power D and Power D plus plus are terrible on those systems. The firmware and the CPU does a better job of hardware assisted frequency scaling. You hmm. want to run uh, so on Skylake or on Zen, you don't want to run Power D and especially not Power D because Power D doesn't compute the maximum but the sum of the load. So basically, if you have more than two or three, maybe four logical CPUs. The original base system power D will always run at full tilt because the aggregate load will always be higher than one core. So in such a system, uh, power D will just always run at full tilt. What you want to run is uh, something, if it works on your system, uh, it's, it's available from ports and requires you to load the uh, CPU CTL driver. It's turbo stud. I've, uh, may be incompatible with your system, but should just be one. Oh, it looks like the package failed to build for some reason. <laughs> uh, turbo start is the package. Turbo mm. start PKG installed. There Second to last one looks like. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, turbo, turbo. start. Uh, maybe oh, it's I, already installed. Yeah, there I, it is. I, I, wrote, I wrote turbo start. My apologies. Just a yeah. typo. And uh, then you have to load using this again, this uh, RC, CPU, uh, KLD list oh. plus equals CPU CTL, service C KLD start. Load exactly. That's the one time usage. Right? And then try to run it as root uh, and see if it detects your CPU. It will, if it works, it bombs you with lots of metadata. So nope. it doesn't work it for your CPU to know you for yeah. the ported version. It's good to know, though. I mean, we, we can, uh, uh, maybe, on maybe a I can, maybe system, I can it looks modify something that. like this. Um, also, look at this so, file. It's like it's looking for sys devices. Yeah, system. that's um, so, but on a small system like mine, it does something like this. So, Interesting. And then followed by this every second. So Which on Intel systems, you get even more data, including the package power and so on. Mm. What you're interested in, in is here to see that you have a stable TSC uh, frequency on all systems from this decade, which means mm -hmm. the TSC is usable as time counter, mm. which is what you want, meaning that there is no drift between the sockets and so on. And then the busy uh, megahertz shows you if the turbo is being used. The busy percentage tells you uh, whether that the system is loaded or not. But if you manually force it to run uh, all cores at full uh, base clock, you um, take from it the opportunity to clock down the unloaded cores, allowing the loaded cores to boost higher. Did you just and say you take away the opportunity? If you, if a kernel takes control of the CPU frequency, okay, and says, oh, I want to run all my cores at 3.8 gigahertz or something, uh, then um, all cores are idling at full base clock, and the CPU has basically 
a form of microcode almost, uh, doing every few microseconds a load estimate per core and then judging how far it and the cores in the neighborhood can boost. Mm -hmm. Or if it even should boost and can clock them up and down in a fraction of a millisecond. Mm -hmm. Uh, where basically below the FreeBSD kernel tick rate, the CPU responds to load changes. Oh my God, this has an SMTP uh, client in the IPMI. Yeah, have to write warning mails. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, that's the part worrying you, not the radius and LDAP client? Wait, so there's an LDAP client, there's this radius? Yes, oh you can God. have LDAP user yeah. access. It's the use for a lot of enterprise applications, so they want to have centralized logging. Yes. Why so you have anyone... LDAP over SSL. Nice that they're still calling it. KCS is, what is that? KCS control? Where is that? K oh my God, yeah. KCS control. Is that? Not familiar with it. Is that, is, wait, is that for Kerberos? Uh, no. That would be be, no. There's um, Active Directory. Wait a second. There's yeah. the actual Active Directory in here. Yeah. Oh my! And it's an Active Directory server. I mean, no I client. To, I would set it up. You with, can use for... your Windows Active Directory server to control who has which privileges and which server. Let's say you had five of these hosts and you had three people that are devs and two people that are administrators and the administrators have access to all five and the devs only have access to three. You would and set an LDAC Active Directory or an LDAC group for that specific. Well, well, I mean, I mean, guys, or I, you I, have I, a multi-tiered support and the first I, tier support is allowed to log in but only to read settings and see the alerts but not to change anything. So no, that you I, have I a read-only login. I understand login. the value of all of this. My worry is like someone coded the client side code of this. Like what could yes, possibly be? All of go this wrong? is running on some old Linux 2.6 kernel under the same user, probably root. Uh, it probably has a permit backdoors. Seen, uh, <laughs> uh, version bump since the release of the a AST 2500 uh, chip. So basically the bastardized Linux kernel and user land get ported to this chip once and then chucked across the t to the vendors and never uh -huh. updated. I'm going to be the devil's advocate and say I'm very offended that they didn't integrate NIS, which is like a lot simpler than all of these. When was because NIS invented? I Yellow pages. 84? Okay. 1984, to be more specific. Yeah, I've not seen yellow pages in use in decades. I, I, I actually still use DOM production today. Wow. Um, I've seen someone using uh, Hesiod. Okay, that I don't, I don't even know. It's. Have you ever seen the Chaos Address family in yes. Bind or something? Yes, yes. That's what, that's that's what, what it was favorite. designed for. Basically, um, it's, uh, from the Project Athena, that's basically D yellow pages over DNS. And FreeBSD used to support it out of the box, but it has all one compile flag array. And the tools have all been removed, I think, in 12 or 14 zero. So Guys, I have to take off. Jan, hopefully you can help them get the uh, the RAID card uh, pass-through stuff set up correctly. Yeah, I, this generation I haven't touched yet because I'm one generation before that. Still on it's the, okay. It's okay. It's quite intentional because I wanted to have the old parts I knew about in my system. The machine, and I bet you there's a control C. Uh, yeah, exactly. But you, he can't reboot without locking himself out. And then no, he, reboot. he can yeah. he can reboot if he accesses the his the website via. Where are you accessing the the BMC from? By SSH um, tunneling through SSH the tunnel, host. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if the host shuts down, he loses his tunnel. Yes, yeah. that's why he can't use the. All right. IPMI serial over LAN interface or console redirection to uh, right. look at the BIOS because it's probably just press the right key sequence on the um, on the keyboard overlays to make sure you're not suffering from 
So if he goes into the storage tab, does it give an op give him an option I'm there for this? Looking at the integrated well. That's a good question. Maybe. I think it should be in no, not there. Maybe in here. No, go back to system. I believe. System. Yeah. Information. And then I go isn't to. The new, isn't the new Redfish stuff somewhere accessible? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. This nope. is LAN. This is the DIMS power supply. CPU. It was there when you first brought it up. It was there. Um, Maybe in here. Yeah. Uh, system. Yeah. I because I, I remember seeing something like that. Oh, there we go. Storage monitoring. Maybe. Yeah. There you go. Let's take a look at that. Come on, super right. Yeah. Um. Okay. And look at controller view. Logical views. Program Broadcom. Net. Broadcom. Available actions. Jbot mode. mode. Yeah, that's the one you're looking for. But there it is. Uh, Enable. That's it. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Listen to Jan. <laughs> if Got you apply before, before and you anything. have already created a RAID, using it, for example, as your boot device right now, you will... No, it's not. Okay. I don't think this is his boot device, Jan. He doesn't have a driver. I don't think he has a driver for it. Uh, so, it, I, I, have, I have two you, separate... In that case, let's look at the host system over the console, whatever way it works for you. Good luck, guys. The Thank mount you. output. Okay, so let's do Z pool list. Z pool, Z -pool sta status. status. There you go. Uh, grab for DA0 and DA2 in the var run dmes.boot. Uh, yeah, it's connected to the MSS. So, yeah. Your, your ZFS pool is on. A device on the MSS2. So, yes, it is here. DA2 oh. pass. Okay, so Please the one come control. I, uh, yeah, I never I never learned how to control use list. Cam control. Cam control. Or is it identify or something? What happened there? Okay, cam if, control. If it's boot is split up across two controllers, then he could do one at a time. And Yes, and, you know. he could. That's a good idea. Cam control list what? No, it's not list, it's dev list. Dev list. There you go. So there you have it. So several the of them show up. So sysctl n kern dot disks. You have four SCSI like I can okay. tell which, which those are those on. are the NVMEs, and it looks like the yes. NVMEs. Since they're NVMEs, yes, I am on the NVMEs, specifically on the DA zero and the DA. Yeah, and let's zero see. And they two. Are... Zero and two. And they are on different buses, but because yes. of this strange mapping, I'm not certain how the SCSI buses map to controllers. So I'm assuming that. Uh, let, <coughs> Let's just grab internet. for MSS zero in your DMS boot. D message grab mm. MS MR. If it hasn't turned over, no, no, it's okay. Fresh installation, so so DA zero and one on this card. Yes, and the DA uh, two and three should be on MR SAS two, as far as I know. Was okay. I right? Yep, looks like that. Yes, but on the um, MR so SAS one is it's empty. empty, which is supposed to be all the other so, devices, right? Uh, if if you uh, so, um, what does Geom disk status say? Uh, good point. Let me first of all go away from this so I don't destroy my fresh no, no. installed system, just in case. So let me go. It looks like you can't destroy your pool by uh, changing a single card because that would be. But I would recommend starting from the the upper cards and going mm -hmm. down rather than the other way around. Geo so that... disk list. Uh, mm -hmm. There you go. 
Oh, and and the, and the question, gentlemen, because of these awful cards, I cannot use NVMe namespaces. Or I don't know. Uh, why would you need to use them anyway on a FreeBSD box? What is your intended use case? Uh, I was just thinking of having like a, a, a cache partition for ZFS later on one of the NVMe. And why do you need NVMe namespaces for that? Instead I've of a partition table? I've heard it's like more efficient or something, but I've never seen actual benchmarks before. Mm, yeah, maybe use benchmarks before. Um... You do things for, yeah. for performance measure before and after. Okay, so what did you want from here? Uh, so we see uh, four NVMe devices of yes. marketed probably as 1.9 or two terabytes. Yes, they are two terabytes marketed, yes. Yeah. yeah. To drive makers terra spots and the opposites of a, a baker's dozen. Uh, <laughs> so, so if you go into the super micro interface, yes, there under storage monitoring. Mm -hmm. For now, we want to have a look at the physical view. The physical view. There you go. Yes, which should show us which devices, link speeds, and so on are detected. There you go. I should have, as far as I know, 12 plus 4 makes 16 lots devices. Of spinning disks. Yes, I have a lot of spinning disks. Can you sort it by the broad con the connected controller column? You can sort it by, you can't sort by that, but you can sort by slot. Or Slot. by include disk info or by capacity. Because uh, capacity if you do it by works. controller, then yeah, I'll capacity you know works. Yeah, these are my SSDs. Sorry, NVMe. Yes. And these yes. are my spinning disks. How mm -hmm. do you know they're a spinning disk? I assume given the link speed of 12 gigabits that you didn't shell out for 12 gigabit. Thus, uh, SSDs yes. with 18 terabytes, but use smaller NVMe system yes. disk and considered using them as cache. Exactly. So I just assumed that you didn't have the money for that many 18 terabytes nope. uh, SSDs uh, laying around uh, nope. when the rest of the system was, wasn't boring to you. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we have Broadcom Zero. We have Broadcom yes, 1. We want to modify Broadcom 2. Just click on Broadcom 2 and see where click it takes Broadcom you. Click on Broadcom 2. It takes me to the controller view. Which kind of makes sense. Yes. So, um, battery status. Okay. So, what? But what is under BIOS boot mode? BIOS boot mode? Okay. Um... Not what we want. Maybe I should click on create RAID first. God knows. No, we can want to avoid dealing with any rates. Uh, it looks like the controllers have different uh, What's actions. the logical view right now? There there you go. We can look at it. The logical view, yeah. But, so it's running with all the Loading, loading. It says no data available. That's interesting. Yeah. OK, so you haven't created anything. For some reason, the NVMe disks are showing up. It's probably the capabilities of the different controllers. Wait, this no, is... But they're all the same, I think. Oh, the I, I, think, wait, I, th I think there's a bug in like the filtration. First, I have to go here. Okay. Possibly. And then I have to go back to logical view. So it clears like the filtration or something. Maybe. No, not necessarily. Go back to physical view. Where are all my disks? It could be that everything is controlled for the, through the first HBA, basically, that it there's mm. only one instance of the option ROM or whatever they're using, mm. running, driving basically all of them. So let's see. Uh, if you click on one of the uh, spinning disks. One of the spinning disks. Select it. I have this and, and then go up in the menu. Can you do anything? I have this stuff. Um which I don't think they are what we want. Make unconfigured good. Make unconfigured. What does that even mean? 
that it's just a drive which isn't part of any logical read volume. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's it at least the terminology they used to use. But okay, so we have to go through the logical view, it looks like. Let's I'll select that, close that, go to logical view. It, it's going to be empty, I'm assuming, based on yes. our... Yes. Yes. Available actions. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can't do it's anything there. Nothing Might there. have to do the make configured good and then maybe yeah, we'll we may have view. to create a rate anyway, at even just to manage things. So you're saying that I have to go to controller view. Let's see. Select Broadcom. Broadcom, select Broadcom 2. Try it. Yep. And okay. then create RAID. Try it. Okay. It will not. It then will you can. All the devices. There you go. Let me have a look. Uh, okay. Create. And then is there a way to not have a. So the Daisy, the old, old, old bad way of doing it is have to have a RAID one or zero mm -hmm. per uh, disk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you scroll okay. down and show the options at the bottom? Yeah, that's yes. the part I'm interested in. Uh, Direct IO. Yeah. But this is an actual RAID. This is not like... This direct. would be creating a Hardware assisted RAID. Yes. Which would then probably just plop up. But so MSOS. Let's close. So you that. may have to. And there may be, a, at least for some cards, there used to be a loader tunable or something to just put everything into. Hmm. Uh, I'm comparing that to mode. this guy, which is Broadcom 1. See, it has JBOT mode. Right. So, uh, and the JBOT okay. mode is enabled, as well as mm -hmm. Broadcom Zero. The JBOT mode enabled, is enabled. Yes. Yes. But if we come to Broadcom Two, there is no JBOT mode. That's so it's a different second. controller. This is a different Look. kind of controller. Yes. Yep. So yeah, I called that. Yeah. Okay. And so you, you have a, the product model was even the product model was different, right? Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. This is the SAS. This is also, yeah, and this is God knows what it is. Okay. So you'll probably want to like Google AOC that part. AOC is the uh, is so Super Micro's strange PCI Express in a slightly different form factor so that you can get a denser inside a system with a riser card. So maybe I it's see. an inverted PCI Express card where mm -hmm. it's a PCI Express slot. You can plug it in a normal system, but the uh, slot won't line up a normal system and they use it to get one more slot into their systems mm -hmm. uh, if you have an HP uh, uh, riser so that because one side is basically inverted and then down and if you put a normal card there it... do you think yeah, if yeah. I access it over the uh, console I would be able to modify that configuration the provider project KVM console unknown you yeah. may also have to look into in this case, looking if Super Micro has any firmware updates for you, where this, I see. some tool becomes useful, uh, BIOS update exactly, and IPMI update, look if they have firmware updates. I see. Uh, the problem is you really don't want to lose uh, the connection while updating the IPMI firmware. Of course, of course. No, no, it's okay. I'll just check it in the data center. What I want to do is just come here, copy this, Shit, apologies for my language, and uh, see what the hell this is. How to get this it into is... IT mode of sorts or JBOD. Yeah, mode. so this is an, an, features an internal SAS connector. Where the, which one is it? The 32DD? Okay. And the one that we have here is the 32DD, yes, exactly. Okay, and uh, just assume if you have... So uh, scroll a bit down and you see it's a slightly, basically it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's the, a Pisa Express card and it has a slightly different form factor so that the slot won't line up on a normal chassis, but we do it so that we can have a one more slot on the 
and there's the firmware download. Right? Oh my and God! Installing seriously. these firmwares used to be a terrible hassle, where you had to boot into FreeDOS and stuff like this. So 3908, uh, 13, Open the web interface and check if it's already running the latest um, one. What, are you, are you're telling me that's the version? No, I think that's the device model. Uh, Pick one of the folders. Pick one of oh. the folders. 3908, 3916. Yeah. That's the device. Maybe, uh, yeah. That's the Which device. One and the one we have here is 3916 yeah it's the 16 parts okay yep and then yeah directory what so is it's only in ir mode so i don't it, that doesn't appear to be it mode. Read me just look at the read me uh read me i do read you a friend of... okay um this is so five two two zero zero two five two two zero zero just... two and here we have five two New York what the hell <laughs> it may what? be OEM by the, so who if you bought this from the OEM they may have flashed their own and up and, and mm. compiled their own no. I have seen that happen um, on oh, several. No, uh, no, no. The, the README is not updated, gentlemen. Here, the five four two mm. four zero o oh, two two four zero o oh, two. Yeah, which is what we yeah, have. That's, uh, yeah, the README is not updated. Okay, okay. No. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> archive. Yeah. The yeah. directory. There, yeah, and there, there you, you have the archive of the older okay. versions. Okay, so uh, there, definitely no update for that. <sighs> This is very sad. I mean, I, I what you can do go. is you can create a single disk weight zero per disk. That will get you fast enough access to all SCSI disks, so all spinning disks in the system. I see what you mean. And then yeah. you move the NVMe storage to the other two cards. I mean, does I'm sorry, I wasn't paying that close attention. Did we actually look in that in that archive? But uh, the archive is an archive of older versions. No, no, no. I mean, I mean the RAR archive that was up there. Oh no, no, it's just a RAR here. Pop no, that open. Didn't. Pop that open. Okay. I, 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 I. While it's downloading it or unpacking, uh, you may your, want to uh, enthusiasm and trust of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just use uh, FreeBSD tar to look at the RAR archive or something. Um, oh, FreeBSD tar does that. Uh, depends on how many RAR features are used, but yes, read only RAR support is part of lib archive, which FreeBSD TAR is just a driver for. I see. So the FreeBSD TAR is just a command line tool driving lib archive. I see. So let's do mm. that. And then let's do this. Which is why, for example, it auto detects uh, the format. You can even use it to read an ISO. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> This is what we have in here. Yeah. So you have at least a UEFI ex executable and a UEFI update shell script for the uh, UEFI shell. Mm -hmm. Basically, we put that on a USB, plug, pop it in, open up the EFI um, terminal. And then just, just run that. Or expose it to the UEFI shell. We have a, a BMC, but yes. Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping there was, some, there was something like we see in the... Uh, you said this some is can do it. We are some you can update it. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll have a different, a whole different that in there, or. But there's no reason to through. override the firmware with the same firmware yeah. version, hoping for some magic change. It's... Well, no, but I was going to see if there was. If you, I was looking uh, for go... a separate one. Yeah, but yeah. there isn't a separate but there isn't. one. Uh, the problem is that the, the last of the three Broadcom slash LSI controllers isn't the same as the other two. Are you it's able to get a dumber, older card? It's... Uh, but yeah. we may have another way of dealing with this. It seems as far as... Please run again the DMESC uh, and just pipe DMESC into less and let's have a look. Maybe another driver attached there. If maybe MSS didn't feel responsible for the older card. So let's see. Now we have MSS 1.0. So let's see this card there. Uh, okay. 
There is the NPR. I think it's called NPR. No, it's NSS one, two, and three. It's the same driver for all three. And then you have the enclosures, assess. And you. Mm -hmm. The one that we're interested in is, is MR SAS one. So maybe I it would be MR SAS uh, one. SAS one, no two, right? No, 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 no. From the inside, it's MR SAS one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the one and the two, the, the zero and the two are running. Uh, oh, yeah, right. The DA. Uh, so you have to target the right adapter. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, if you, is there an MSS utility which you could use, or is the MPS or MP something? Uh, there is no MR SAS utility. Um, there is an M MPS utility. Yeah. Does it show the adapter? Adapter. It doesn't. And there's the older uh, utility. You can put, tell it which adapter to target of dash U. Oh, seriously. M I did not know that. So show adapter. Uh, you prefix the command with the U and then the unit number. I see. I see. Okay. So it would be dash U. What what would the unit number be? Like MR SAS the 1? In index. Oh, just, just one. Just the index, I think. So just one. Okay. Okay. Uh, show adapter? No adapter? Nope. It doesn't like that. It does uh, not like that. Yeah. What else could uh, be... Um, MFI util is not responsible. MPS util, the one Mf, you tried. Mf, MFI util might be responsible. MPR util but... exists. Do you show also... all and then see if it has the unit number there. MPR. So show all. Nothing. Oh, without the, without the dash U, uh, U1. Also nothing. Um, try oh. um, MPR MP util R instead of. So let's do that with show all, doesn't do anything. And then if I do it with NPR util dash u1, show all also doesn't do anything. It's MSS. I don't, don't know if MSS has a utility. So in the MR, MR SAS utility, it says that you should Ma use the cam, cam control thingy. Oh, if it's probably integrated, why not? Well, I, I mean, it's probably integrated because, you know, it's free BSD. We like integra integrating things. But you know, for the um, love of God, I don't know how to use the camp control utility. Yeah, if I do list, uh, sorry, what was it? Dev list? There you go. Dev list. Right? Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm seeing actual information, but I don't know how to do, what to do, what to do with any of uh, these, What you're so. seeing there is that it sees the controllers and the NVMe drives, but it does not, and the... Uh, uh, chassis, but it doesn't show mm. you the 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 other cards, which mm. is uh... because the controllers not showing them to it because it's not in JBON mode. It's only uh, probably in IR mode, which only shows you yeah. the the RAID. So that's IR RAID mode. You mm -hmm. would need an IT firmware for this to be able to get it show up in JBON mode. So uh, um, your only two uh, solutions really here are to either change, like he said, to each disk to its own RAID array and mm -hmm. or to buy a new RAID it's controller. Maybe that all there is a way, um, let's not realize that there's something packaged as a port. And, and last question, do you think that there would be a different configuration in the KVM console rather than in the web interface? KVM console? You know, the-, the uh, Unknown if it's- it may be that the if you press the right key and in the option one that there you can set something not integrated here. Okay. It's worth checking. It's also worth checking the uh, exact card and other reports for these kinds of things. So it's often useful to not just look for FreeBSD but for TrueNAS reports. I mean, I mean, I mean. This I actually thing... want. Yes, sir. Go back to go back to the screen you had up there. Here. Oh, no, sorry. Here. That actually says JBOD mode enabled. That's oh, no, that, 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 that's, he's that, looking at. That's Broadcom zero. We want to do Broadcom two. Oh, that's a, okay. Yeah, this is- Gotcha, the, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, um, but, but what I, you I, can do to access your disks mm -hmm. is you can create one RAID volume per disk and- No, no, I mean, we've already discussed that. I was, I was just wondering if, if, if we could- uh, actually change it to J, but I don't know if it does support it or not. Like, uh, would it be worth it to go to the data center tomorrow, you know? So I think that, like, if we look into... Um, uh, generally, generally several speaking... several of those boxes, ask your damn in, um, integrator 
One by one, gentlemen. What uh, you said, what, Jan? Because I couldn't hear you. Ask your system integrator to put it into the right mode for you. My system so, integrator is a salesman, so that's a pass. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> so generally, I, I want to explain that IR at the end of the model number yep. generally integrated indicates rate. the mode that it is. So if it doesn't have an IT mode, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it won't be able to pass it into JBOD mode at all. That, that's just... No, you're not that's gonna... not true. That used to be true for the old uh, 2000 uh, and 2.1 generation, but starting with the 2.2 generation, there were pass-through modes. Racing 2.2. The MFI util driver and so on. So even like eight years or so. You no, it wasn't a get... FreeBSD thing. It's how the controller exposes the disks to the OS. No, no, there is a, a way to put it in a pass-through mode with the IR from the fourth certain generations of cards. So there may be a way. Yeah, can you pass that model number in chat so that I can do yeah. some Google feel on that? Exactly, that's a good idea. Yeah, What's the P at the end? Je ne sais pas, monsieur, je ne sais pas. Okay, okay. Let's check. Nope, no idea. Am I in the right thing? Wait a second. Three nine uh, S three nine one six S three nine one six. Okay, then it goes to L. Okay, then it goes to H sixteen IR H sixteen IR, and then the one at the bottom, I guess, thirty two DD, and ours is P for some reason, just like a P out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to confuse you. Yeah, just to confuse me, maybe if I modify the web page and do like, mm -hmm. no, no, that's a bad idea. Actually, a search might be a good idea. Yeah, a search might be a good idea. Oh my God. Wait, products? There we go. Seriously? Oh my God. Uh, oh. They do have a user's guide. Just no mentioning. Maybe Rate pause. I think we can do something like that. not begins with, but just contains. But I think we are kind of bought the high end version of the old generation or something. Yeah, is is this the, the dash p? I guess doesn't matter. I don't know. No, no. But... So, so sorry, and I was absolutely thinking of something else. Users, guide. Having... this is what we were saying. Yeah, on the. Okay. This is a very long user's guide. Okay. Well, uh, just 50 pages. And there it tells you how to enter the mega rate configuration utility. Oh. Broadcom mega rate settings. Okay. Yeah. There under advanced and then the option on the web. Uh, sorry, which, which chapter is that? For what? Uh, it's page 25 around ish. Four, chapter four. Virtual drive? No. For three. For three. Okay. So one before. Yeah, it that's... tells you how to do things. And then yeah, no. the question is, is there some kind of pass through mode? Drive management. Configuration controller drive hardware. Configuration management. In configuration management, you can, okay, make JBOD, make un unconfigured. Wait, make JBOD? What? Here it says make JBOD in the description. But does that mean that is... I think of... JBOD is a quick configuration for... It used to be, at least in the menu set, but if you create, say make JBOD, it will create a single disk rate per disk. Okay. And depending on the version, it may or may not put metadata in the last block of each disk. Mm -hmm. uh, here someone asks uh, for a very uh, similar-ish card if it has an IT mode. Let's see. Unconfigured good, lol. First of all, I cannot believe that someone, like people are actually using hardware rates in this year and age. Like why? Uh, tell like, that it, to the Windows operator or the Linux user oh who, ha who uh, follows a guide which says to create an X4 um, for the whole disk. Oh my God. 
Well, you know, where you, if you create a virtual machine, you create a QCO2 file instead of a ZVOL. Yeah. And there have been such horrible things as hardware rate controllers with, uh, with logical volume support, mm. where you can even snapshot rates in firmware. Oh my God. And it explodes about as well, um, badly as uh, Linux LVM when the snapshot device overflows because the snapshotting is implemented by basically having a thin provisioned volume, which they save the old data for uh, to before overwriting the data in place. Mm. And if you run out of space to thinly provision the storage with snapshot just breaks. Mm. Or the system stops writing. Neither of those are nice things to encounter. But yeah. Both of those sound like bad days. So, yeah, yeah, they sound like yeah. nice horror stories. Yeah. Uh, I mean, personally but... speaking, I, I might have the luxury to just go and buy another controller. I'm not sure yet. Well, it, it looks like maybe some of that but stuff that was. One of the questions is what. For spinning disks, the controller is probably more than fast enough to just work if you configure it to just create you, one. See you next week, and Mark is done. So just uh, create, try it. It's not like you're damaging your disks or something. You're saying to create the RAID now, like this? Yes, just take it, the problematic controller, create a RAID. Create RAID and then do let's let's just choose one of these. Is that what you're saying? Yes, right? one, one enough, of these. Then. Create this could be a RAID zero. Obviously, zero. I have no idea then what that is. Scroll down a bit and let's have a look. New one. Uh, yes. Neo logical one strip. What the? F what uh, the just uh, you can try to just uh, t click on them all. Okay. And then tell it to create fifth. Uh, so that would be interesting if you can do it in one pass. Otherwise, you just destroy the rate volume without have, ever having put anything on it. You select all disks. Wait, but if I select all disks, it's going to be an actual no, no. strike. No, you don't. And then you say, tell it to, uh, at least I sure hope it doesn't do this insanity. And then you say, I want to have, uh, for my 16 drives, I also want to have 16 logical volumes. Okay, so rate zero. No, no. And then go down. And then say and then new logical, time. and then you should be able to have 16. Okay. Submit and see what happens. Okay. And what about these other things? A stripe size per DD. I don't even know what a DDF is. Uh, but... It's basically uh, every so and so disks, uh, kilobytes, mm -hmm. data is striped to a new disk in your stripe if you have oh. multiple disks in some kind of stripe configuration. Okay. Uh, but it's a trade off between. Random read performance and uh, sequential performance. Okay. Mostly. So basically sequential write versus random read. Don't give them any names. I'll read ahead. Uh, read, given that it has a cache, read ahead policy may not be a bad thing. But again, uh, remember. It, we it, wanna... it has a battery. It's an expensive LSI controller. It it's, uh, probably has a gig or two of battery back cache configuring it at as a um so i would be worried about having it as a direct as a right back cache because then if the battery runs out you actually lose data so no no that's right down stairs there okay there uh, where it says right back mm. you probably can set it to right through right wait a second right back we want to do right through right back with bbu so as long as the BBU is good, it uses okay. right back, then it falls back. It's a trade off, but for spinning disks, okay. No right. Read ahead. Um, not really. You have so much memory. You said that ZFS probably does a better job yeah. using the than um, okay. there we go. Yes. Access policy. Read write. Read write. Hash policy un unchanged. Changed and no in it. A quick in it, maybe. No, I no. I, th I think no one. It would be would make more. Yeah, sense. let's try submit and fire it off. Fingers crossed. Submit. Maybe. Uh, let's see you what happens. See Sixteen the new disks. Pa, 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 pa. There you go. Yeah, they show up. They showed up in the console. Yeah. So can uh, just 
There you go. Geom disk status. What a ge uh, geom, geom disk, disk status? status. No, wait, geom disk list. No, no, no status. It's not, we're not just registered as disks. So, uh, cam control, we scan all. Cam, cam control, control, we scan all. Oh, oh there they are. It just took a few seconds to okay. do the bare initialism. And now you're probably seeing 16 more disks. Uh, status. So there you go. So here's my worry about this. Yes. Disk. Uh, if I do disk list, mm -hmm. will I see each device by itself? So if we go yes. over the DAs and then we come to DA5, oh, there you go. It's 14 terabytes. What? 14 terabytes? That's wrong. That's interesting. I know, right? It should have been like 18 as far as I remember because it's they mark it as, you know, 20. It's a sum. Don't tell me there's a logical way to... Well, no, we don't want to... Now the logical view is the interesting part. Logical view. There you go. Come on. No data available yet. Okay. Um, logical view, yes. Logical view is still empty. And then available actions, maybe? I'm not sure. There you go. No, no, no. no it's, it's not okay. in here. So just let's okay, go back then to controller physical view. view. Yeah. It's really... Status. You know, uh, don't do it. Where, how did I do controller that? Controller view. Uh, controller view. Okay. This is actually interesting. Then TB pick to, the controller. Oh, Alejandro also has a theory, which is like terabyte to tiba. tiba what was it? Tiba? Yeah, sure. I, but I, I, I hate that name, whatever that is. Terry, ETB, yeah, okay. bit, ah, no. um, yeah. This is what we have right now. It's not showing anything else. It should it should display in the logical view, right? No, no, not necessarily. Let's go back to overview. Maybe we can find something mm -hmm. in here. Okay, yeah. Five status. Okay, so sixteen good. Yes. Okay. No complaints. Controller view. Nothing. I think it should show up in the logical view. It should show up in the logical view. Available actions, maybe later in the logical view there. Nope, nothing. Blink, blink, yeah. blink delete. I mean, there's nothing. Maybe in there. Uh, go into uh, the controller view for the controller index two. And what about here? Like, what if I do like this? Yeah, then you're sent to the controller view for that controller. Nope, and nothing. you're given the option of. Clear all configurations. But that would like clear the RAID configuration. Probably. That's kind of what we want, don't we? And then create one per disk. No, again. Oh, I see what you mean. Actually, or you can a, go click on create idea. RAID. Maybe that's, that's the idea. general way of accessing this. Yeah, yeah. And actually, let us have a look. So just to make sure this is not less. This is um, uh, all checked together.txt, mm -hmm. let's all check together. And this is what okay, it looks like. Okay, let's have a look how large they are. Okay. 15 something. Yeah, this is sad. Okay. And now um, let's do, let's let's remove these things by going to- Maybe you have to click on create rate to get into the edit view anyway. I see what you just mean. misnamed button. Like this. Nope. There's just no data available at all. <laughs> what? Yeah. Login and out? Add the select group. This is so weird. Yeah. Login and lo Looks log like out. a desynchronization. Log out, log in. Okay. Have a look. I have no issue with that. Let's try. But I do. I, this shouldn't be necessary. <laughs> I, I, I also agree with Alejandro. This could easily be like a TIB and the TB conversion issue. No marketers. Nope. Marketers again, but <laughs> let's try. Okay, we're in. We're going to, uh, I think it was storage monitoring. Yep. Then we go to drive state. Let's see. What right. are, let, have a look there. Okay. Go. Physical view is going to be practical. Uh, let's see. Yep. Nothing changes in here. Okay. Logical view says uh, also not that problem. much. We can have a look at the controller view in in the, then, uh, sorry. Yep. 
Yep, no, nothing, 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 nothing. Uh, if you really click on clear all configurations, it should. Clear all configurations. Um, sure. Yep. Okay. Okay. I trust you, Supermicro. Let's uh, see what you can do. And now we come back to- They said that it can here. take a while. I wonder what the while means. Let's do with- Something uh, between capacity. seconds and hours or days. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably something between seconds Broadcom, and minutes. Broadcom 2. It has- Create a rate. Nothing in here. Okay, so now let's do create rate. So what I want to do is uh, there, and if you see there, the size one. is just yes, to create this. Okay, go down, go down, go down. Okay, so and one by one, and then we're going to keep this. Yeah, as this is. all of this is only important if you have a multi disk volume. Give what do you mean? It, mm, the uh, stripe size and so on. This only takes into uh, comes into effect when you have multiple disks. Okay, so just leave it on default. Okay, okay, and you want to the... maybe give the volume a name, and even if it's just disk zero or something, sure. Uh, let's just name this uh, uh HDD zero, <laughs> yeah. So, read ahead is probably not useful, but write, nope. write back with a BBU, but no write back if the BBU is below minimum capacity in a few uh, years? Uh, 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 I'm thinking let's do right through and take make, make sure that ZFS takes care of stuff. Um, yes, and no, the advantage of trusting the battery-backed write cache in the controller is that it gives you better synchronous write performance okay. because uh, basically as soon as something is in the disk cache, it's persisted to disk. Which really helps with spinning this. This cache policy <coughs> unchanged or enable, just enable it for now. Okay, as you say. It's a so. test. So and then no in it. Uh, maybe do at least uh, I'm gonna go with no in it. Let's see what happens. Let's have a check. Maybe we couldn't see them because we didn't give them a name. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that, that would be so been stupid. So yeah. Like okay, so logical view. Uh, run cam control, we scan all on the Nothing previous D here. side. And on the this can oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I can re-log in. No worries, Habibi. No, no, you uh you want to re-log in into the FreeBSD system. Mm, that was in the remote control. Yep. Remote control launch console. It's okay. in a different window. Yeah, it's okay. I'll bring it back in a sec. No worries. We can bring it back here. That's so. And okay. FreeBSD will be a bit mad at you for having removed the disk. But I'm sorry, FreeBSD. Yeah, cam control, we scan all. And disk status. Okay, sure. Why not? You have one more disk. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, list. Disk list. 18 terabytes. There it, there it is. So the RAID was doing some bullshit. Exactly. It did something stupid. I don't know what. Okay. But so now you have this. Uh, um, I don't like this. Let me put it this way. I don't like this. Like, uh, look at the goddamn descriptions, like Broadcom. Like, no, it's a goddamn Seagate. It's not a Broadcom. Motherfucker. No, no, it is a Broadcom because what you are seeing is a logical device. I know, I know, I know. It just I happens know. to correspond to a single. Yeah. As you can see there, it so describes itself as a card, so which is interesting because now we see the chip. It's a, it's based on whatever product it's based on. So yeah. it's an MR nine five six zero sixteen I. So what that's the, the part you want to look up because look up, yeah. the firmware is probably the same or almost the same, not same to the degree that I would feel comfortable using MegaRack or SAS to flash to on it. Yeah. To kill the but MR9. Sorry, MR Mega Rate 95, which is a bad sign that it calls itself a mega rate, but 
Yeah, what kind of card are you? So it's a pure um, Zeta and SAS controller, no uh, tri mode to it apparently. Oh, wait, maybe. Uh, who knows? Okay, or 32 NVMe. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, specifications. Oh. So apparently the card claims to be related to has an eight gigabyte cache on board. Okay. DRAM cache. It's already ready a tri mode card, so it does support NVMe, just a lot less uh, devices because NVMe has more bandwidth and so on. Okay, it's not too confusing. Product brief. Oh, there's the user guide. The original one. I wonder if the mouse works. There's a chance. Usually. Oh, the double click you works. You have to. Hmm? The double click works. It's selecting the line. <laughs> yeah, so mouse de detected a USB mouse. Great. Uh, So okay, this is this is actually very interesting, obviously. But uh, uh, we did. I, I I mean, we're still kind of in beehive space yet, you know. Uh, so J bought stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So red features. What the fuck is that? So it claims to have a J bought mo mode with weight zero, one, and ten. How can you have a weight ten J bought? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Can you send the link, whatever you're reading? Uh, sure. Thank you, good sir. Copy link. I don't know if the deep link works, but I will it, it, click it, from here. Yeah, it starts loading a PDF. It's Yeah, here's a PDF, no worries. So this is a family of... So, oh, one idea is, is store CLI packaged as a port? I think there was a port, but it was store store CLI. Which one? Are yes. We on? uh, so uh, the basically the uh, vendor tool has been ported as a port. I'm on. Um, I'm guessing the 39XX. Yeah, the 39XX. So, okay. You may just want to install EKG install or CLI. or CLI. Let's hope the package repository. Interesting. PKG search. Maybe there are some restrictions that. Uh, is this. You think? Like life. Yeah, you man must manually fetch the distribution side for legal board com with stupid reasons. So port snap. Yeah, this is what the port file oh, says yeah. on this. Okay, okay. <clears throat> you must something something. Isn't that Yeah, fun? just git clone the oh port snap. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use for my ports. What what did you assume I would do? Git clone it. <laughs> oh right. No, it's very far away from here. I and I only have a local copy in Armenia. For, git for clone the... it from your local git. <laughs> <laughs> and then pull the changes. I think I should also start cloning the uh the 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 the, the port tree as well. Yeah. I think it's yes. sir git dot psd dot am. Oh you uh, anon yeah. git. Yeah, yeah, it is in here. Something like, I, I, th I think this one clones from. Yeah, it clones from the the official repository. I thought. I yeah, thought but how often it's on? Um, uh, probably like ten minutes or like half an hour, something like that. Yeah, it's definitely less than an hour. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, maybe I should make an, a free BSD organization for this, on my. Or local like the mirror. official one. What do you mean? There is a FreeBSD organization on uh, which you. No, this, this is my personal Git server at the end. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but but I, I used to own, I guess, because they used to give the access to the 
name system, mm -hmm. uh, am.freebsd.org, because I used to manage the local mirror. Yeah. But uh, it's been a while. Anyways, so uh, coming back to our story, you said that I need to have the ports and then I need to have, what was that thing? The Broadcom zip file, place it in dist files and then run make again. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah, you have to locally just run make package. I see. Uh, oh. It will probably ask for tools like for a few dependencies like the command line interface and so on. I see. So this is the first time that this uh, machine is doing anything except package install. What does it look like? Yeah. Like nothing. Okay. <laughs> now we have like, something. Uh, HTOP is uh, asking for a 4K display. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, indeed. Have you ever seen uh, the top on a recent ish Mac OS? Yes, yes, yes. A 4K yes. screen is barely enough to get a yes. whole the columns. It's like yes, ninety percent of them are. It's a goddamn nightmare, and you can't scroll. That's the worst part. Like you can't do left and right to see what's happening. You know, like you have no, to. You can't. And maximize your terminal and i'm a single screen guy because you know i i I'm, I'm cheap sometimes and i have to like scroll like move my window left and right to to see you yes that's such yeah i I'm... i i know what you mean my friend i know what you mean and okay we're ready user ports um it's in you said what is csw what's Okay, message sent and receive. Okay, let's probably mark messages. This boost or CLI, this thing. And mm -hmm. then I do like make. Make and package. Will complain, yeah, will tell you to download this file make, manually. Think, what was it? List missing if there's a dependency? Can I, is that is that no, how we do? You just uh, put it into a US airports. Uh, no, um, no, no, I want to. Uh, uh, fetch depends. Make I fetch? Wanna, no, I, I want to see if it has like... Uh, you probably, for legal reasons, have to download and click the I accept your bullshit button. No, no, I'm okay with that. My question is, is is, is are there any dependencies? Because I don't want the port tree to... Uh, you uh, make... Uh, what is this? List. There you go. All depends list. That's what I wanted. Make all depends list. Mm -hmm. And then and... just PKG. Just PKG. Okay, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay. So now I have to then, click on this. Okay, doesn't have any button. options. Okay. You have to get this file into the um, user pods disk files directory. Okay, the file is downloaded in the background. Let's do an SCP. Okay. LSLTR. SCP. Is this it? A unified something goes to my fancy server. Go there course and um, is it big not really it's very it should just should just be a few megabytes it's 30 megabytes okay so cp well wait i have to go to back and then back and then dist file dist files doesn't exist mkdd mm, dist files file cd dist files cp tmp unified something something Okay, dot yeah. is the and everything is all correct. Okay, there we go. So now we go back to Sisutils, Sisutils store CLI, and then we do make package. Make package. Okay, so not make install. Okay, just make package. No, just have it create a package for one. Okay, now it has created a package. Now you can just install make install from a package. Make install. Done? Is that it? Okay. Looks like it now. Package now. You should have a command. I think the command is even written in mixed case because then so, uh, store CLI. CLI. Yep, no, it's just it's a single lower one. case. Yeah, it's it's all good. Okay, store CLI. Interesting. We have something. Store CLI. Yeah, it what show the same terrible user interface uh, as the. Uh, 
Oh, there you go. Something happened. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, it's detected your uh, devices. So you have uh, two eight port controllers and one 16 port controllers. And now you may be able to use the vendor tool to uh, create the other, for example. Do you think I will be able to set this to JBOD mode using this utility? <laughs> That's possible uh, possibility. I don't know. I haven't had access to this <laughs> card to try. Must... Okay. I, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm feeling lucky or not right now. So uh, show. So enable rate card JBOD with store CLI. So, so okay, uh, so there is the store CLI slash C zero set JBot on. Maybe try that on all cards. Slash zero is probably controller zero, so that's not the one we're looking for. C one probably, and then set J JBot equals on. Let, let's do show first, and I um, want controller number. Yeah, yeah CTL yeah, one, one and then so slash, slash C one because okay. yeah, and then. Set space JBot equals on and see what happens. Let's do get first. Get, what can I do with get? Like what if I do like just get? No, this is a terrible user interface. One sec. Uh, let's, oh, it, it has is. help of a command. So I can do get help. Oh, there you go. Oh, this is good. Okay. So we can do slash C1 get, let's say, um, Config, would that make sense? No, that didn't do it. Virtual disk enclosure controller, okay. There's probably a PDF documentation somewhere. You're kidding me, right? No. Oh, you're, you're being, okay. I thought that was like sarcasm or something. Okay. No, no, with these vendors, there's a store CLI reference manual, PDF. Like this. This wasn't a joke. This really, uh, this is how they think. This is how they work. Yes, terribly layouted PDFs, probably written in Word. I thought that uh, you know. I thought that. Uh, okay, uh, this is the perfect was... tool because Company, so... it's from 2013. So the first Google hit isn't the because it's from. But there's probably for the chip this card is based on the site where we just fought the user um, guide and so on. There's probably a guide for the store CLI version for this card as well. So, hmm. But given that you don't have any data on the card, what's there to lose? No, nothing. Nothing at all. With just trying to uh, basically... I mean, we could destroy the whole server. There's no data on it. It's, it's, it's a freshly installed free BSD. But I, I would love yeah. to fix this during the Beehive call while it's recording because it yeah, would be so useful for someone, you know? Yeah. Okay. So first Only of all, if you're interested in uh, we, we the have molecular a... of um, <laughs> we, we system. Have... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, have, we have a single thing here. Uh, what do you call that? The um, weird thing that they had. Uh, I forgot its name. The, the, uh, the visual disk. Let, let's clean the visual yeah. disk first. Clear all configuration okay. of Broadcom 2. Bye-bye. Sure. Apply, mm. yes. And, and then wait for FreeBSD to tell you that uh, is already DA4 destroyed. has went yeah, away yeah. of the dodo. Okay, you killed it. Okay, it's we're good. Okay, now let's do this weird command. No, and... you don't want to do a store CLI 64, and we don't want to do it on controller uh, zero, but zero. controller one. But he has he has good c c content there, so we do controller one. Step. And I would rate with the fourth part for help. Oh, here are all. Oh, there we go. Here are all the options. So J bot. Nope. Set. Oh my God. Can we do a less on this? Okay. At least if you can't, you can just redirect standard error to standard set, out and then you yeah. can set J bot. Okay. So let's do that. Set J bot equals on. Oh. Let's do without force first. Yes, and see what happens. 
It Fail. says controller, controller does, does not support, support J-Bot. J-Bot. Mode. Oh my god. Okay. And then you do force? <laughs> you try what I mean would it like what's it suppose what can it do but scream at you? Would it like shout at me? Yeah, it will stitch us, so I still can do it. If you try. Okay, this is a fifty thousand dollar server. Let's see what could possibly go wrong. Um Okay. Burn down the data center. No, nothing. It just said, it just said does not support. So J-Bot. you just discover the joy of smoke computing instead of cloud computing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. There story. is no, there is no cloud. It's just other people's computers. Uh, exactly. Why we're at a gallows humor? What did the fish next to the Titanic have for lunch? What? Five rich guys. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a harsh one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I know it's a tasteless joke. What if we do Too salty. get J uh, <laughs> No, nothing in there. Get help. Looks like this card can't do it. Uh and instead <sighs> you have to uh I'm just gonna create... buy another card. If you can return the card, go for it. If you can't, maybe someone else has a home for it because it's not the worst of cards. It's just an annoying one. Yeah. Um, so uh, this page may also be useful. Well, and it's, anno- it's annoying for anybody using ZFS, but anybody not. It's No, even with, if you're badly, uh, I don't believe it. Activation of features. You can insert license keys for features using store CLI. I mean, have you used Cisco routers before? Yes, I have. Like they have an activation code for SSH. That was a thing like like 10 years ago. During a Chaos Communication Congress event for the, the nice people he, over here's, at Juniper here's, sponsoring... Here's, here's, the Here's the thing. Equipment. What what I want is like someone from Cisco or Broadcom mm-hmm. to watch us, please. When this goes on to YouTube, and be like, oh, "Okay, we yeah. fucked up. Like we actually m- m- messed up." But like, we, we, um, we do not see the problem because we are not do not have the necessary market volume. Um, no, the, the, the web page is still loading. Just FYI. Yeah. Okay. It's not for me. For me, it loaded in an instant. It it uh, could be a yeah possible issue. It's okay. For me, it's fine. it was a f- basically this page loads uh, basically instantly on my system. I don't know, maybe either routing to your your ISP is very bad or whatever. It's picking fine though. But it uh, interesting. Maybe I don't know. John, that's a good point. Maybe maybe I should contact Supermicro or the reseller and tell, hey, I want to change this card with a cheaper one that has less features. You know, exactly. Just- <laughs> Basically, depending, I don't know how your local how it works because you probably didn't bought it as a private consumer, so maybe as a company, so as a business customer, you're probably worse off when it comes to just uh, refusing part. <laughs> Yeah. Telling them that this device is basically not up to what you ask for, maybe the way to uh, exactly get them to change this for you. Because if you just bought a bunch of servers, uh, there is a chance that the salesperson will just accept this uh, reclamation. Yeah. If you even if you can just get the money back for the card and hand them back. I know I would. I mean, exactly Indeed. because uh, uh, I'm buying wrong... for business. This keeping exactly. you happy it's is something just you want. Wrong... It's the wrong product for what you need. It's not that it's a bad card. It's that interesting. That it's <laughs> that page looks like a blast from the past. Uh, just to be clear, this is like a a, a bouquet business in the country. Is that is that what you call it? Like a bouquet business? Like a just two guys doing things? You know. I, boutique, I, I, yeah. Boutique, thank you. Yeah. Boutique, yeah. My my French got in. Uh, yeah. It's oh, a, it's yeah. fine. So I'm thinking like that, that, that. <laughs> looks more like a, oh. like a business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so they're actually, like, they, they are some of the few people that like if i tell them i'm using free bsd and they're like oh okay what do you want like you know what you want i'm not here to okay, tell you, uh, you yeah <laughs> you want a card which has a true uh pass remote pro so you want them to just pass through call it it mode is probably what the most common expression for this because it used to be that you had to flash the IT firmware, which disabled the integrated rate support, which is the IR instead of IT uh, firmware. You used to have to be flashed in, and some cards I think have enough internal flash where you can have two images and then you can, be, can toggle which active image to use. It's annoying. They are definitely not in. And one of the problems, for example, with Dell uh, used to be that you their um, out of band management uh, yells yeah. if, at you if you refresh the card. Everything works, but it's always shouting at you that it can't show the volume, the the logical volume health mm -hmm. information because one of the reasons why they do all of this, especially Dell and HP and you know, and so on, is that they expect people to run Windows on bare metal. And Windows is such, uh, and especially used to be such a dumbed down operating system in this regard, that the vendors had to step in and they stepped in by moving these health monitoring stuff and so on into their BMC so that Windows didn't have to do much. Oh, God. Hmm? What are you looking for? I am trying to find a proper reseller, but I think it's... You want... Computers. Yeah. Hey, at least they have web ships, so I'm pretty okay with that. So, uh, how is shipping from anywhere else, or how problematic is it to get anything? No, the delivered? shipping problem. Like, if I ask, if I ask uh, anyone for anything, it would be like two weeks max. You know. The no, the question is: Is there any problem if you are working for a university or something with ordering something from out of country? No, proving no. that you have getting multiple uh, offers in and oh no no you mean like a tender bureaucracy stuff? no 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 my other institution has that problem but not this yeah. one okay yeah no i'm pretty happy with that but yeah i think i think i'll have to go and start to so yeah search the, for things so basically <laughs> you would have to create a other uh, rate level zero virtual device for each of the drives well, before this goes into my data center, I have to ask. You're right. So, and this is good. So, on FreeBSD, we have a store CLI as long as you download the zip, apparently. Um, but yeah, and you have the same options available via, via the IPMI BMC. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, John, yeah. you just sent a card that looks similar but supports IT mode. Am I right? Yep. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. It's basically uh, looks it's like it's actually one. the exact same thing. Yeah, SAS three, twelve mm. gigabit. No, um, it's the uh, it doesn't have an IR. It's IT. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's you just may in theory. Wait a second. Which chip is there? Can you list the controllers using Store CLI again? First of all, look at here. Supported OS support, Windows Server, blah blah blah. Free BSD, Red Hat, and Seuss. Uh, we Linux. can't see what you're seeing right now. Oh, we I'm so your, sorry. We are seeing your mouse move, but you only share one window with us. There you go. Good default. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's like Free BSD, Red Hat, and Seuss Linux. Oh, yeah. I think Ubuntu people are gonna get pissed. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's okay. They only support the enterprise Linux distributions. Such as free BSD. Officially, <laughs> it's not that it doesn't work on the other ones. It's that they can't be bothered to provide support, and they don't have a structure to interface with vendors. Mm. Where would Supermicro go to get official De uh, Debian support in? Right, that's a good point. Or that Arch point. or other community distributions. There is no legal entity for them to uh, approach talk to. Exactly, there's nothing to approach for them. Actually, most of them do have a legal entity that they could that they could work with, but it would be Not somewhat handled. unprecedented. Yeah, and it wouldn't be easy to get 
there is a legal entity, a foundation, but the foundation isn't in technical control. Is this also Broadcom? Is this basically yeah, the same the, thing, but in IT mode? Uh, that, that's why I wanted to see the uh, list that it could actually be based on the same chip, just running the right firmware. Oh, how how did you want me to check that? Uh, using store CLI, for example. Okay. To run basically sh the show uh, in your shell history, sh you should still have it there. Store CLI show or something. Oh yeah, store CLI. Let's do just C one for. Sake Slash C one show, yeah. Show. There you go. And uh, no, that's not no, what this. We this was something else. Wait a second. Oh, it's scrolled by maybe. Because um, we now have all of the disks. Show, yeah, it was definitely just show. There you go. There it is. No, it's this is a three nine sixteen and this is a three six sixteen. Okay. So uh, there are all like um cousins. No, different generations. Okay. Probably so. What I can assume, at least, is that you know it is it. One might... thing which may be relevant is that the older card. We have to check uh, how many PCI lanes it takes. Maybe because it looks like it's a full length sixteen X card. So it may be a PCI Express free card, yeah, with uh, sixteen lanes, which provides the same bandwidth as the PCI Express four card you mm. have installed. Provides on just half as much, eight lanes. So you're losing one of your few full length sixteen X uh, slots in the how, server. How did we get the card number before? We had a command that did that, right? Um, oh yeah, it was it was, it was it was in here. It was in here. Apologies, yeah, it was in here. Yeah. So we would go to broadcast. So this this year is a PCI Express Generation Four card with only eight lanes, so but it has the same bandwidth over eight lanes as the older card, which does mm -hmm. support the IT mode. The old card mm -hmm. there um, is requires a full with sixteen X slot instead of just an eight X slot to get the full bandwidth required. There is no IT. That many yeah. There is no IT card of exactly. Yeah, got it. It does the feature doesn't exist in this card and generation mm. combination. Mm. Maybe because they claim that it's no longer necessary. Our RAID engine is so fast that if you put it in pass through, do almost nothing, wait zero mode, it can keep up. And oh, you really want access to all those corner features? We have in theory, support for this. So maybe they have don't just have it in theory, but in practice, and then it's fine-ish. You just spend a bit more money than you should have on a card. But just creating one virtual disk per physical disk, maybe yeah, but you're still losing you're you're still losing access to smart information. No, you don't. The password mode works. You okay. should be able to get smart uh information if you can't then throw the card back at them but it used to be possible to get this for single volume devices on some cards again uh, just install smart mon tools and find out yeah well gentlemen this was very educational <laughs> You can go, yes, I think, for yeah. hours. This is fun when I bring like a live system, you know, like yesterday when Dan brought his live system and we could just go for hours. So, yeah, yeah. it's it's okay. No, we're, we're, this is good. I'm I'm going to play with this again tomorrow at the physically in that uh, 100 megabit connection. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's such <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, what is with that? <laughs> I, I, Cheap I, I, Colo I, bought one 100 megabit Put in a fifty thousand euro device, but, but but to be fair, this is just their location where they test devices. You know, it's it's not their actual production. So I, 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 oh, wait, I, I, I you haven't fair. accepted the device. Uh, the device is here. So here's what happened. I went on today because they told me that they have an issue where one of the cards, the NVMe cards, was having a temperature of eighty degrees Celsius. I'm yeah, like, that's are a you bit kidding? Hot me? for an idle a card. Lot. Yeah, exactly. It looks card, like yeah. they may have to look at the cable routing. 
Yeah, no, no, it, it was a firmware issue. I just okay. modified which firmware it would use. And the, the problem still re resides a bit on Windows. It's getting a bit hot, not, not, not 80 degrees, though. I think it goes no, like What something. you really want to do is you want to put it through a really low test. Yeah. No, I did like, that. I, yeah, I did that. There, write there random the... uncompressible data, then write compressible yeah. data, then basically, yeah, torture it with file. No, that, that, that an uncompressed uh, yeah. ZFS data set and until the SSDs are warm and the CPU maybe one prime uh, 95 so M prime to in mm -hmm. idle priority mm -hmm. so that it doesn't uh, reduce your effective IO bandwidth by keeping the CPUs too busy yeah. so ID prior 10 M prime and then what do we have in here? Hmm? Oh, this is FreeBSD. So if you really want to, uh, to have some fun, just install M Prime or um, uh, on the stress system NG. and uh, or stress NG, but M Prime with medium sized FF uh, work sets. So that would be interesting to just see how far you can get the low, uh, the power consumption yeah. to spike. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll, I'll do that. The I'll, I'll, test. Uh, definitely, I'm pretty sure that, you know, this card is not going to be doing any JBot mode anytime soon. Uh, unless no. they, yeah, so... Um, but uh, it would still be useful to install the smart mount tools. Yes. I and think we can point them at now. the uh, single um, disk virtual device and find out if you get smart information. Yeah. And uh, basically... Smart CTL dash A slash def 84 type less i i think i i do yeah, think smart that, cdl scan works too i do think that let's see geom disk you said That's, status right yeah it would, smart mount tools may have a way to punch through this adapt uh abstraction what which is mean? why the scan is a really good idea from chat Oh, that's jump. interesting. So if I do smart, smart CTL. CTL rehash, smart CTL. Scan. Which shell are you using? Yeah. So oh, that is. Exactly. That's, oh, I see what you mean. So I have the uh, the DAs, which are my NVMEs, and I have the MR SAS for my other devices. Well, but it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, that but looks yeah, familiar but, with your old MFI cards uh, from like yeah. How long ago, Tron? Two, three, four, five. It it shows six. It should be twelve. Did you create? Maybe you have to create a volume for itself to be monitorable yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah, but back, back, back then you here, would right? see up like we did before. You may yeah. uh, actually see the NVMe devices. See NVMe uh, double devices. one. One times as NVMe device and then the other way around or something. Mm. But then if it was, to, yeah. Okay, no, okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll I'll check that and I'll let you gentlemen know how this goes. I think this was very interesting and educational. Like, for, like we we did everything from IPMI to SSH con console to storage to uh, this should have also been done in the open ZFS call <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be a lot more uh closer to on topic <laughs> yeah yeah but no i mean for a beehive call i think this is still on topic because a lot of people are going to buy devices like this to run beehives and stuff like that um for me i'm going to be running mostly jails anyway but still i'm very yeah. sad with this rate card uh maybe they'll, they'll, they will modify it and ship yeah it. it's basically overkill it is I know like, we've gone out of our way to buy to buy cheaper cards specifically yes. to avoid this problem. Yeah. Uh it's just that it's so much dead silicon you have no use for exactly. and the software to basically you have you're paying for expensive power hungry cards only to uh put them disable in the and disable basically how do I get Everything I've paid for disabled, please, pretty, pretty, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, gentlemen, I, I, I need to head out. I will talk to you well. guys later. Absolutely. Thank you very much and see you in two weeks. Yep. Bye. Yes.
Uh, anyone else? Any any thoughts? We we went over three and a half hours almost to doing all yeah, of this. Yeah. Um, very much. Calculate the travel distance uh, for uh, Michael and tell her to him as a city name. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely more than one moose jaw for him. <laughs> Does the Zipo have like a, a test, uh, like what, what do you call that? A stress test thing in here out of the box? No, not directly. You would want to create a ZFS data set with uh, compression disabled. Okay, I see what you mean now. Yeah. Uh, so that, and maybe even sync disabled, depending on things for pure torture testing uh, of putting maximum load to the controller. Then maybe configure uh, the lock bias to throughput and so on, and spawn file and find out different combinations to put real load on the system, mm -hmm. and at the same time load the CPUs. There is and yeah, memory this controllers. Is, this is the free with, default compression with LZ4. Yeah. Okay. No, yep. But even zero length uh, compression, depending on what. The next problem is that modern uh, SSDs have compression engines in the card themselves. So if the data is too easily compressible, you're not really putting much load on the bare NAND flash on the SSD. And uh, John, uh, to answer your question, uh, I did not build this machine, nor did the organization build this machine. More like the organization, which is you know, a group of scientists, they went to a... Uh, would you call that a vendor? I don't know. And say an MSP, I think would be the, the right term here and say, uh, we need a machine with approximately this much RAM, approximately this much disk space. What do you suggest? And that, I mean, th we're talking about an MSP that, that like they're everything they do is windows, you know, like the, they, they, for them, the idea of uh firmware mm -hmm. war is like oh there's like a firmware war it's like is firmware bad i thought that firmware is good like like the the, the we're talking about <laughs> these kind of msps you know it, it, the, the very common types that you you see in, in, in any type of enterprise basically so from their yeah. perspective like oh of course you need a rate card like you need you know data security otherwise how are you going to you know, make sure it's fast and blah, 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 mm. and stuff like that. So they paid a lot more money for things that they don't need, basically, which was very sad. Um, but at least the CPU and RAM is good. I cannot complain there. You know, with the Epic and the, uh, what is it, CCTL? Well, one of the questions uh, which may get an unpleasant answer is if you look at the DRAM they installed, what's the... Uh, you can see it in the IPMI, what speed is the DRAM running at, CL rating and so on, which really matters for uh, AMD systems. Uh, because the uh, inter die, uh, interconnect is clocked off the mm. same clock domain as the uh, DRAM oh. controller. So if you run higher clock DRAMs, uh, you get a lower latency in nanos nanoseconds because the latency remains the same in cycles in the relevant clock domain up to the point where you have to put in a divider. Mm -hmm. So basically there is an optimal, because it looks like this is a dual CPU system, right? It is a dual CPU system, yes. Yeah, and that gives yeah. Exactly, a uh, DMI decode, or maybe you can open this dim view there. DMI decode, yeah. You may uh, want to look in the BMI, see while it's running. T17, what is T17? I'm not type. aware of that type. Okay, and 17 is for the RAM. So I let's think. have a look what kind of, yeah, yep. Only three to a uh, thousand two hundred, which is kind of fast for ECC, but not fast for what the silicon can do. Uh, apologies, um, where did you read that? But oh, there we the go. The speed, yeah. how many mega transfers? Yeah, but look what it says. But configured that. memory configured speed. speed. Oh, that's um, yeah, you want to look into the 
memory controller settings in the BIOS view, but you, I don't think you can do that via the IPMI at no, runtime, no, right? Nope, nope, not as far as I know, no. And I don't know what's the maximum, for that you have to take the product member of your main board, open the main board user manual and find out the limits because it looks like your system is fully populated. So you are running a two, di uh, two dim per, um, Per channel configuration, if I yes. understand correctly, right? Yes, yes. So fully populated? Yes. Yep. That may limit your maximum well, JDEC compliant configuration, but especially for the kind of compute, which is quite memory heavy, you're describing, trying to get the uh, configured memory speed up to the full speed could get you a really nice bump in system performance. I see. And that would be very by forcing expensive. the system to run at full speed rather than basically I see. safety settings. Yeah. This isn't the same as overclocking, but if it works, it should work stable forever. Yeah. If it doesn't work, because then okay, maybe the signal integrity isn't there, and yeah. check the settings for the main board, which should be possible. Oh, this is interesting. The fastest the DRAM is quite expensive to memory get, yeah. device, no module installed. Are you telling me that I have hmm. located the here? This it one could, it says, let me put yeah, them. Yeah, it on. could be that you uh, that you. Still have unpopulated dims. In that case, how many dims do you have there in in the IPMI menu? Is it eight, sixteen, sixteen? It's sixteen, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine, no ones. Ten. Yeah, it's it's sixteen. Yeah, which is nice because that means they, it's only half populated. Okay. The main board, unless it's a main board where not every uh, potential of the CPU is utilizable because there's just not enough space to put 32 DIMM sockets on the main board. But the nice thing about having such a system is that you can uh, run higher memory clocks without running into stability issues mm. because uh, you're not sharing the memory controller channel with two DIMMs, but each DIMM has its own dedicated memory channel. In this case, which is optimal for perf peak performance, if you uh, can fit your working set into the available memory capacity, so it's actually a good thing if it fits your use case. American Mega Trends Inc. Oh my God! I can. Oh yeah, believe. AMI. Uh, They're still around. <laughs> I cannot believe that they're so around. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, the scourge of... Uh... <laughs> so, uh, okay. While all of this was obviously very informational, and I hope it becomes very uh, informational for the next generation when they watch our videos, mm -hmm. I do have uh, one last question, which is... Uh, the, the one that you said about making sure that the system works with 3200 mm -hmm. uh, for that, the speed, that would be only that would accessible be, via the UEFI menus. Yes, yes, and that would be also make my basically the 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 the, the connection between open the main board manual from Supermicro and it should tell you how to do. I it. see, and so and there that, it says a product name. Where do you mean that? I'm sorry. AS2. Zero two four US here. No, no, in the by in the IPMI view. Okay. Product name. Product name under IPM. system. Yes, this. This is the string you want. Just throw it into chat. Twenty twenty four. I cannot even text copy it. AS AS two twenty twenty four US dash TRT. What did they sell you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, because uh, the reason why the the faster RAM is interesting for me is uh, the scientists do a lot of work in in memory, right? They, they exactly, read, and you have already they, yeah. paid for it, exactly, and it's exactly. just not configured to run at that speed. So, 
the CPU should definitely be capable of doing it. The main board it does, and yeah, the, the board so, does as well, and the DIMMs as well. But it's not uncommon for systems to default to a, sa a safer value, which may uh, increases memory compatibility. Just in case the CPU is an older model, etc. No, 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 not in case of that, but in case of that, yeah, signal integrity isn't that great. Um, I see. Something, something. Uh, now you want this manual for the board. Oh yeah, and super micro manuals are great for torturing PDF re uh, readers because <laughs> all of the di diagrams are vector graphics. And if you zoom in, they have to just in export them from some of the cut models or something, given the detail level of on some of the vector graphics, <laughs> the front view with all the meshing. Yeah. Okay, this, but this is the, okay, quickly. So now you will want to go from the server to the main board. And there you can see the motherboard manual, MLN2280. I think I lost that, by the way. Uh, let me just drop the link into chat. Uh, this is what. Oh, yeah, okay, got it, yeah. And it looks like your ma main board is one of those monsters which can support a fully populated. Fax to the Netherlands, Fax. I mean, I still use Fax, but I, I thought I'm the only. Uh, public. Procurement is all I can say to that. Lawyers. Security boot, save and exit. Okay. DDR4, or maybe 3200. Here, because memory support. There's probably a memory support matrix telling you, you which uh, speed. But again, even this view here telling you which speed you can run with RDIMS, with LRDIMS, and so on. Uh, one dim per rank is at least just try it. It should work. This, yeah, exactly. And often try it, torture. If it works, it works. It's ECC protected on the bus and in storage. It's not like you're going to risk uh, silent data corruption or something. Also, because this is scientists, you know, the, the, the data itself doesn't even matter, apparently. I never knew that. Like, well, don't tell them that. Yeah, apparently, like, the actual outcome One matter. of the most deadly things you can do to them is bit rot in the way that they don't know that they are basing their future research on faulty computation. Faulty computation, yeah, I mean, yeah. This uh, is just off by, disaster, off, off, basically. Off by one error, right? <laughs> Not just off by one error, uh, things like, uh, I think some, was it Satsolver, which discovered a bug in Intel uh, Skylake Xeon CPUs. What they did is they uh, used the 8 and 16-bit uh, opcodes to make their code a bit smaller to fit more code in the instruction cache because we only had to modify small bit fields. And it turns out that the out of order store elimination engine, so the part in the CPU, if an instruction comes in mm -hmm. and it sees, oh, this is something li uh, like set a register to an immediate or an operation independent of the old value, like so a register with itself. So basically the zero and move elimination hardware, which replaces the so a register with itself with just uh, set the register to zero. Okay, first of all, check this one. How do I update my BIOS? It is recommended mm -hmm. that you do not upgrade your BIOS if you are not experiencing any problems with your system. Yeah, that's what a vendor is expected to say because of course the BIOS works. Uh, and anytime someone uh, updates the BIOS, they can break the system, uh, resulting in an RMA. <laughs> For AMD Epic platforms, Windows Server would not install properly. It works with Linux. Suggestions? Yeah. Disable IO MMU. Oh my God. That's because Windows, so old Windows Server versions don't know how to deal with that. 
Oh my yeah, god. Then they have to make the system look dumber than it is. That's the bridge, um, right? What? That's the bridge. The IOMMU is a memory management unit between the PCI Express devices yes. and the main memory. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It allows you, uh, uh, the kernel to uh, protect it and the uh, itself and other devices from malicious PCI devices. So if, let's say someone finds an exploit in your in a virtual function. Yeah, that too. But uh, if correctly set up, even without virtualizing it, let's say there's a bug in your memory controller, it wouldn't be able to override random physical addresses. For example, I had a faulty um, wireless card in my old desktop. And uh, when I enabled above four gigabyte decoding, uh, it just didn't. And the result was that the card would just DMA all over physical memory, overwriting my uh, ZFS cache to a point that not even ZFS could recover because basically the DMA engine on the uh, Wi-Fi card would write over already checksum data. Here's also so, interesting. So Linux the only machines. Time I lost the ZFS pool to data corruption. Linux machines that are older than four nineteen. Do not support two hundred fifty-six <laughs> CPU cores. Yeah. Like, when did when did FreeBSD add like two hundred fifty-six? I think it was like FreeBSD a eight while ago. Uh, and you could even before that you could change one header, recompile, but it broke a small part of the kernel ABI, which is again on topic because right now the default ABI is two and up to two hundred fifty-six because there's a the kernel exposes a fixed size bitmap of CPUs. And this bitmap right now has 256 bits. It can be bumped, but some of the locking algorithms uh, don't scale well. So maybe they are fast in the common case, but the garbage collection afterwards is M square. So basically there you have to then do some kind of um, nesting where you basically do two levels of locking or something. And okay. this is one of the problems. FreeBSD 14 just has to get the ABI right and then later releases can make it scale. Okay. So that it's fun to use and not just possible to use. Here is how to install a battery. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it's also how to plug in an onboard header, and especially funny on boards, they refuse to sell to you unless integrated because they assume you're normal. Someone paying a lot of cash for this system is too stupid to assemble it into some configuration instead of just providing oh, right. an online configurator to buy everything. So, telling you, yeah, but if you want to put this board in this chassis, you also need these cable uh, trees. Is it iOS, iOS RV, iOS VR? I forgot the term. I, uh, hmm? I think it's IO. SRV. SRIOV. I'm so sorry. SRIOV. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, apparently, the, the Nix also support SRIOV. Yeah, that's your network card. If you yeah. do LS slash dev IO, IOV. LS. Sorry. I'm um, OO. Terminal, what LS? happened to you? I'm sorry. No. Okay, there we go. LS, LS dev. Yes. SR... No, 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 SR, just IOV. Slash dev IOV. IOV, there you go. It's a directory. Yep. And he, it's he a directory the with one device per card. Mm -hmm. And then there's a command IOV CTL. Yep. Which is now we are back to perfectly on topic. Yep. And this command can be used to configure. Um, Do you want to configure? Uh, wait. I have. Let's I have... make sure we're configuring the card we're not using. Yeah, the, the IL, the IXL one is is not used. The IXL yeah. zero is what I'm using. Let's have a look. As uh, I do have a. So let's do apropos. Let's do IOV. And we then have you could do something like this. 
It's IXL, what? And this is what it looks like, apparently. So this is something hmm. uh, what you would want to do. Okay. The command I provided would configure the physical device as eight virtual devices and make pass through true by default. This So basically now your card would show up as eight cards. Mm -hmm. And you could also do the other way around. Wait, wait a second. I should have, yeah. Uh, Doing, well, sorry, sorry. Where, where would the config file go by default? It's just, I like to put it into slash etc IOV CTL dot interface name. IOV CTL Let's, dot. So something like this. Dot, let's say IXL1 dot conf makes sense. Great. And I would have something like, so what is PF? That's like provider? No, physical. Physical. Okay. PF device would be. Uh, so this IXL. configuration, the one I just put there in the chat. And num. Virtual functions. Virtual functions. Let's say four. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. why not? Uh, you can have eight or sixteen, I think, on these cards. But uh, what's the default? The default uh, is for all, basically. There, you would say pass through is true, so the host wouldn't attach to the, them the virtual functions by default, so that they remain available as pass through devices for Beehive. I see. And the and VF VF0 the is the first function. one. There, you disable pass through, so that the host has one of the for, in your case, uh, virtual and functions available I don't need, as a network interface. I don't need it. I can just do like this. Uh, if you do this, um, pass through true, none of the four functions would be available to the host. So if I do if config on the host, I will not see it? You will not see any usable network interfaces anymore. Instead, you will see four pass-through devices to be passed through to Beehive guests. Let's do that. Okay, so now I do this. Then I do IOCT. IOVCTL. IOVCTL, thank you. And then I would do, what's dash uh, D or dash F? Dash C for apply configuration, dash F for the config file. So it would be Etsy uh, IOVCTL, okay. And dash yeah. N is for just check. I just dump it, I think, and not, uh, it, yep, I think right. it didn't apply it. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't apply. Yep, it just shows it. It Great. just passes it. And it says that it's correct. You know, like there's mm -hmm. no bugs. Okay, and if I just No typos, like, yep. Now I allocate do all this. to the host and then use devctl to put them into pass-through mode. Oh, that's actually also a good idea. Yeah. So now I can... None are allocated to the host now. So if you run this command uh, for now, real... There you go. There is no driver attached. Yep, it's just so, pure PCI. So now... Oh, it looks like you still have the IXL. Maybe your driver always has a physical function which is usable, or the physical function just became a dummy. But if so, you run PCI conf dash LV now. PCI conf dash LV. Pipe at it the into bottom, the bottom. Yeah, I exactly. Would, there you go. You Here's see PPT for pass through. Yep. And you have four pass through devices from your Intel 7, so, uh, 700 let's, series. Let's remove that. No, don't. Why not? Um, instead, change it to a uh, change it to uh, pass through like, equals uh, false. So then you will see four NICs, which are also useful for jails because you can... That's what I want to do, yeah. Because then if you just by default make non-pass-through uh, uh, non devices, the hosts should see basically all the virtual functions and you could then pass them via if config to different vnets. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what So that you have vnet enabled jails without yep. any bridging, which is also a neat trick. Yep. Let's check. It says it's fine. And then let's do it. <laughs> execute. It would, oh, device busy. You may that's have to dis, uh, destroy, deapply the configuration or something. How? Uh, there's a 
com other flag there dash d or something dash d okay so uh, i would do something like um, this i guess yeah, delete okay but the config file uh, has been modified is that fine hmm? the config file has been modified i changed the pass through no but you have already created them and Yeah, mm -hmm. would attempt to delete all VF children of... Yeah, that's correct. Go. Okay. And now you should be able to load PCI, the new configuration. PCI conf dash LV. They are gone. gone. That's correct. And in if config, we have them. Okay, great. And now you if don't I... have them now, but if you have them now. And there you go. There you go. Now I have the So as you can see, you have four uh, receive and four transmit queues per virtual function. Yes. And you, yeah, so you could now, uh, if what, you wanted, what, you could- What the speed would the support? What? What speed would it support? The same speed as the- If lift? everything is working as expected, I line see. rate or almost line rate. I see. Because uh, here's why it would be interesting. I'm here's getting- uh, what you want to- I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a slash 28 from mm -hmm. the uh, Academy of Science. So uh, I have, I'm going to have a lot of public IPs. I'm thinking of just passing, assigning the public IP to the IAVF interface and then vignetting it to the jail. And now my jail would have an actual public IP address. So um, each of these virtual function uses a bit of real hardware inside yes. the network card. So. And the more of the virtual devices you have, the le less, at least on most cards, queues per virtual function you get. Let's just for curiosity's sake, destroy the current configuration, double the number of virtual functions and see what happens. So I'm going to change this to destroy. D again. Yep. Okay. Change the number of virtual functions from. Detached, de detached, detached, detached. Let's do change the number of virtual functions to let, let's get crazy. Let's say 16. Do you think it would see support? what happens? I don't know. I think it should support it for you. Uh, it's for this, uh, 63 or 64, I think. Well, we can but let's we, see what happens now if you apply it. We can do D message grab yep. IXL zero. This is yep. called Ethernet. Okay, so this is. X710, yes. And, 10. and as you can see on the X710, mm -hmm. you know, on the, the uh, browser window it just had open, yep. there it says that it has 1024 receive and transmit descriptors each. Wait, 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 wait. Up where, to where did you see that? On your terminal, in the middle of just about, using 1024 transmit and 1024 no, yep, okay. So oh, that says uh, on line six. Oh my God. Okay. That says it has first that many descriptors, yes. but, but it only has above, 64 queues. 64, yeah. And now have a look at the other network card right now. IXL1. One. One. It should be the same card as far as I know, yeah. Okay, now. NetMap, okay, nice, 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 good. Yeah. Now just apply the configuration and see what happens. With 64? No, with uh, the 16. If okay. the number of queues compared to before changes. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Okay, so here I set it to 16. Yeah, yeah now. Now I'm going to do. Before uh, we had four per. Okay, okay, now, so uh, now I'm going to... Use uppercase C to apply okay. the configuration. Go. Ba, 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 and... There you go, All 16. devices have five... They still have four queues per direction and message signal interrupts. Five, again, probably one per receive direction and one for the... Yeah. So Back I think channel. this can go I think this can go up to, you know, 64 apparently or 63. Try try it. Okay, Why not? Let's let's do the IOV. 64 would be really nice to have. Okay. Because that's 
almost a good number of jails. <laughs> good one. What? Very good one. <laughs> Just see what happens, how many it lets you create. Uh, it may be that you can only create 63. So while but... it's doing that. Just try, yep. It's light. Okay. Uh, no, the other one. Which which one is the smallest? Git tiny? Just install normal Git on this box. I just like good package management. Okay, so we destroyed all of them. Let's go and now change it to sixty four and try again. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Uh, sixty four. It seems like a lot. Okay, and then let's do. It is IO probably. I expect um, it to be one more than supported, but. Give it a spin and see if it complains. But but as far as I think, this would only fail uh, using re at resource exhaustion in the end. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, it may be that it can create hmm. VF sixty two if you run yes. it, and, and sixty three will fail because that's going to be the host, right? I think there's some limitation to. Let's try. Okay, there 64 you go. functions. One of the first one of them is the physical one. Oh my god. One. Oh my god. But, oh my god. So oh let's see god. what's happening. No, this has nothing to do with religion. Otherwise, it <laughs> this has work. nothing to do with religion. <laughs> Why? You you did something that it had an effect, so it's not religion. Okay, agreed, man. I'm not, I'm not. Okay. There you so, go. Okay. There you have it. There you have it. Okay, so I'm going to do so, git clone HTTPS. <laughs> I'm tempted to ask you to write a small clone loop to just turn all the interfaces up to see what happens, even if they're not <laughs> there. Uh, CD jailer make yeah. install. But, Great. So if, if jailer supports VNet enabled... Uh, it does, it does. Jailer less. Uh, there is a chance you could just, but SRC. unless something is terribly broken, a hundred megabit link is just comically slow, especially um, given yes. you're on a 25 gig or 40 gig or whatever card, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yes. Okay. Jailer. Does it even supports a hundred megabit link speed? It. I mean, it does. There you go. The IXL zero is running it. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. That. It, oh, wait. Is it a copper? transceiver built in it's it's what? copper 100 yes Co it's copper 100 so it's a 10 gig copper port on your main yes. board oh. yes yes and oh, and, yeah. and both of these coppers support up to copper 10 gig yeah okay so it's not a 25 gig okay yeah, max. yeah. so it's... now let's do a jailer i mean i i wrote this but i don't remember it sorry image mm -hmm. A list it should be empty the problem I'm... is that the interfaces on the uh, this port won't work yes the mirror equals https mirror dot yandex dot ru slash oh. <laughs> validate what you're downloading right yeah yandex people are nice i know them and they're they're actually very big free bsd supporters yeah, but they may not be in a position to. The problem. Uh, the problem is that I'm right now downloading on a hundred megabit connection. That's that. That's that. That's problem. true. Yeah. Yeah, but Intel it does that. That's fine. So let's let's come back here. Here's the interesting mm -hmm. one. So we actually have now six. So going forward, you would want to create the same number of virtual functions on both physical network cards. Pass them to the. Pass them pairwise. Oh, this gets interesting. How do you do LACP? LACP? Uh, uh, because uh, can you have 64 link aggregation groups on two interfaces in your switch? While they are actually, you know, physical. Okay, got your point. Because everyone has its own MAC address. And it would basically look like yeah something really strange. In I haven't thought about it. Of course, you could do uh, what's probably maybe more useful would be to um, alternate 
them and use active passive failover mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that way you can actually distribute load. So, okay, here's, here's the, okay. So jailer create a, let's mm -hmm. do this. Let's do dry run, less noisy. Don't care about the domain. Let's go with network type e pair bridge. Sorry, that's my kind of default. I'm. I apologize. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, I think I think Jailer should okay. have created a bridge interface. No, it didn't. Jailer init bridge. But yes. Okay, that's done. Uh, um... And now I need. Um, now I need a. Uh, New. I don't need anything else. Type. I just need an IP address for now. Ten zero okay. zero. Ten. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, ten. Okay. And uh, jail's Slash name. Twenty-four. It 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 gets the net mask from the uh, the bridge. Um, I'm gonna name it Jan. Great. Um, actually, let's do it. Crest. Okay. So uh, this is the dry run. Yeah, it looks fine. It it looks absolutely fine. Let's just actually execute it. And there you go. Um. Uh, uh, or is it? Yep, it's good. So now I should be able to do if config IAVF like zero, I guess. Yeah. VNet. Uh, is it? Yep. Crest. Jail name. And it's gone. Now you're JXEC into the jail. Nothing in here. Jailer console crest. Okay. If config. IF config. There you go. That is. And now, if you turn it up and plug in a port, is there a link? There's, in? there's nothing plugged in it. So yeah, it, it wouldn't work. I A V F I A I A V F zero up. I mean, it wouldn't do anything, but still. Uh, yeah, no, no carrier, but yeah. Oh, but this is very interesting. So now, you know, you can pass. Now you have a hardware way of multiplexing your physical wow. network card in hardware using the IOMMU wow. and uh, virtual functions so that the so you don't really need an IOMMU because you're you having only a single kernel so you don't have to have untrusted kernel code but still nice to have and in theory this should get you uh, 10 gigs to theory, uh, yes. the, the jail without having to do software bridging. So I'm and assuming... Without having to do, so in theory, you should be able to keep all of the offloading features you see there enabled. Yes. So, so the, uh, for what, what, I'm, summing, what, what I'm thinking here is that is that any jail that needs, that needs to be public now can be pub public with the virtual functions. And my other jails would be, you know, bridged internally anyway. Um, but I, when you talked about the lag, the, the mm -hmm. lack technically, I, I was thinking yep. initially what I was thinking of doing is, is, is making the IXL zero and one a lag to the switch. Yep. That's then, the same thing I thought. And then I thought, this would be even How more. How would the yeah. switch respond to one pair of ports? Or I, what can the next problem is that um, do your switches support multi chassis lag, or would you terminate both links in the same switch? Oh. And so, so now each of my each of my. Do you have I, one or two or more switches in your rack? Uh, no, I have only I, I have only one switch. I have only one switch. Yeah, then it, okay, then it's easy. But at least you don't have to deal with multi chassis lag or other no, madness. No, no, no. no. I, I'm still not sure how would be the nicest way to do the a configuration for a network like this. Like, would I do lag? Would I bond? If you're terminating them on a single switch and they're both onboard network. You don't really need them for redundancy. Right. Um, the with, yeah, with link aggregation, you can, if you have enough connections, you can go, get good load distribution. Also, also, if I do link aggregation, would I get like 20 gig connection if I do, if I configure it in like join mode? Yes and no. The problem is what... Link aggregation is not supposed to reorder packets from the same flow. 
because TCP frowns upon this. I see. So if you do real round robin dump uh, packet, then you will probably lose throughput because the receiving TCP client or host uh, uh, server will see the packets out of order and will have to reorder them and that costs you more performance when the higher link, link bandwidth will gain you. But I if see. you have multiple connections and you use the hardware support for basically hashing the uh, layer two and four header information, mm -hmm. things like MAC addresses, IP addresses, port mm -hmm. numbers, you hash those to a link. So basically hash modulo and the number of links and then throw it out. If you mm -hmm. do that, you can not accelerate a single TCP connection, but you can accelerate the total throughput for the interface because the load gets distributed over multiple links. So let's say you have four links, you have 256 connections. So on average, 64 plus minus a few mm -hmm. um, for each link. So if you have enough connections, uh, it averages out, uh, uh, the bandwidth per connection averages out to pretty good, almost linear scaling. I see. But not for a single connection. Why things like, for example, at least the Linux NFS client, and maybe this has also been added to FreeBSD support, creating uh, multiple NFS connections to con uh, from consecutive ports so that the assumption is that basically consecutive ports will end up in consecutive hash buckets mm -hmm. because the hash is pretty simple. And then basically you have as many hash buckets uh, as links and as many connections as links using all header fields identical except for the TCP source port configure the hashing correctly, and then you can have one NFS mount utilize all links. Mm. I don't know if FreeBC is supposed to have seen people talking about doing this with Linux's NFS line. But the other thing is, if you have a system running this many virtual machines or jails or whatever, is it really important to get more than 10 gig from a single one, or is it better to get good throughput on all and ease of main maintenance. Do you really have to support a single j workload running in a single jail, getting more than half the, the total bandwidth? If the answer is yes, then you have to look into dynamic load mm -hmm. sharing and so on. If the answer is no, then your life became a lot easier. Wait, how do I remove from my own jail? Oh, I can remove uh, from my own jail. You uh, don't, you can't push it back. You have to execute the same command outside of the jail. Take it back. Even if the interface doesn't exist right now. Yep. There you go. Now it's okay. back. And now I can do, wait, now I can do, destroy mm -hmm. all of that. And we're back to normal. Tuck, 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 tuck. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the detachment takes longer than the attachment. Yeah, because there's a lot more to tear down because it has to make sure that there's nothing stuck in any queues before the queues can be destroyed and so so that you don't get dangling pointers. Uh, would you be willing to just try to double it again and see what happens? Sure. Just see if this 64 or something is really the magic limit, I presume. So as soon as it's done, let's just add literally a single number and see what it would do. Or just double it again and see what happens. <laughs> we want to see things break. <laughs> Don't you want to see things break by I having mean, I, 128 I, I, interfaces? Uh, wait, what? How, wait, uh, we did we did 64, 128. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. The next doubling is 128, if it's possible. I don't think it, but, but that would be very interesting to see if it actually worked. That would be like, I, I don't see a use case. It would only that. be one virtual interface per core. So, well, per logical core, right? Yeah. 
on both nicks together. So, so let's do this and then let's do uh, hundred twenty-eight and see what happens. Okay. Let's see if it accepts no, the configuration. V, okay, create dash n. Consumes, okay, when packed, okay. Uh, okay, man, as you wish, let's let's try this. At worst? Uh, yeah, invalid argument. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's try, try 65. Uh, 65. One more than before? Yeah, and that would say also, yeah, okay, so 64. Yeah, so 64 is the, is the is, maximum per. Is the, yeah, is the magic number, okay. Okay, so you can have 64. Okay. Virtual and interfaces, which is already pretty high number, useful. actually. IXL1 uh, cat mm -hmm. dash N. And is that number mentioned here? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, using MSI X interrupts with. 16. No, no, no. That's something no. else. This is uh, the physical device. Okay, got it. Uh, you had a lot more just repeated with 64 and have a look at the output from. The Some tools which will probably go bonkers uh, with rendering this. Just if you turn them all up so that we have created probably at least one interrupt each, and then you list the uh, interrupts mm. of the system. There is a way to also list. So start uh, if, so so start. I think there's a net stat way to list the IRQs. No, it's so start. Um, this uh, VM start and so on, or, or um, wait, why don't I remember? Mm, Sysstat, so yeah, there is one for it. each, right? Is it dash ICMP? No, 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 that's a P VM stat. Is VM the, stat, okay, yeah, exactly. This is a dynamic one, okay. VM stat should do it. There you go. Uh, no, not VM stat, so start dash VM stat. Dash VM stat. There you go. VM stat dash I is maybe what you've been looking for. Oh. VM stat dash I is the one time lock. Dash I? Oh, you mean VM stat dash I, and uh, if you wanted to continuously update. Yeah. Just uh, you put one in there and you see uh, where well, you have a little problem. Yeah. It's displaying a thousand or so. Did you already create the virtual, the uh, new? Did, no, did you reapply no. The... They are all destroyed. Okay. So if you apply it and configure at least some of them up, or even all of them up. Let's go small. Let's go like 16 so we can see okay. something. Okay. Yeah. IOV. No, you always have to pop it for less at this point. Creating. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, now we do this. Is that what you meant? Wait a second. Uh, yeah, this is not really useful right now. You have to pop it. Because we're not using it. Use it once and pipe it into less. So without the uh, one. So VM start dash I pipe less. There you go. And then you can see pipe less. It is in pipe less. Okay. Uh, I should. There you go. This is IXL zero. No, we want IXL one. There are your PCI control uh, storage cards. Yep. There is your IX zero. So <laughs> maybe below <laughs> these. Whoop! Up! 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 There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And um, where is our cute mouse? Wait. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, how many IRQQs are in here? Okay. And that changes, right? No, it doesn't? Uh, I thought that's it a question if you uh, create the devices. And you, I think it do, you have to have at least one uh, interrupt for it to show up ever. So if the interrupt was never raised, it's not printed or something. 
I see. Something along the lines, I'm not entirely certain, but because... I see. So an interrupt has to happen for it to display that. It has to have happened at least once, I think. Okay. Which explains like the last line, right? IRQ one one. No, that's the no, that's the total since uh, the the sum of all interrupt counters since boot. Yes. And IRQ one one seven four might have been assigned. You to can uh, have a look at the format. Run it through uh, sort dash k two or something dash uh, n sort dash n dash k two or something. And then you should get uh, the it's sorted numerically by the second uh, column. And why the second? Oh, you want to see because it's a count to see the most common interrupts, isn't it? I think it's sorted by that. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's sorted by names. like completely randomly. Is it? No, no, it's basically the interrupt number. Mm. Okay. But not the, so dash I sort dash N K K two T dash N. I don't think I need T numeric uh, dash N for no dash H for human numeric. But it's not human. It's just a count. Okay. Less. Oh, I think I missed something. One. Yeah, two. you missed. Uh, you want dash K three? Sorry. Yeah. Less. Uh, now to the bottom, go down and use dash R. Yep. There you go. So the receive interrupts zero. are the most common, followed yeah. by the USB emulation. And <laughs> so then most of the interrupts are network related, followed by this. Interesting. Mm -hmm. How is this? No. See, this is not. No, wait. Why is it sorted mm -hmm. like this? What? Why is it sorted like this? It's weird. Like what? Like here is 91,000, then goes down to like, what, 700, and then goes back to the. Because total. this uh, one, the total line has a different format. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. no, there's one field less. Damn it. You would have to remove it. Before, if you want it perfect are there, layout. What if, if there are other interrupts that have more? Like, you know, here you have the timer. Yeah. I think this is a bug in the code, by the way. I think this should be like CPU no, column space. Timer. Maybe. Yeah, it should. Yeah, it should be CPU column space timer. It's, maybe. It's, it's, uh, it's a typo. Oh, wait a second. Oh, v it's that. Uh, oh, Libexo. Either that or it's spaces versus tops. Lib exo that we separate as a top. JSON dash i. There you go. Yeah. Now good luck with uh, JQ. Uh, I'm okay with JQ. I have no so issues. So am with JQ. I, but I wonder if 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 lib wait. What else did lib exo support? I forgot. We have JSON, JSON, we have HTML. It's the only have... thing you want to deal with unless you have a fetish for uh, XML. I have a fetish for XML, but I'm not going to show it to you today. Thank you. No, I'm a nice guy. I am a nice guy. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you, we want to do... Um... Yeah. Now I have to worry about it, given that you had to repeatedly uh, convince me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about the total. For now, this goes like oh, this. Oh, you want okay. to really have a look at the rates? So it would be in interrupt. We would have the yeah. total. Okay, so it's interrupt. Just total. for information, not that many years ago, it used to be that a 24 line terminal window or slightly more was enough to list all interrupts on a system. Seriously? Yes. Wow. What, cards what? had just one or two or maybe three interrupts, interrupts per card. And then the... I hate this word. How do you type interrupt? Okay, there we go. Interrupt. Statistics, was it? Interrupt statistics. I was, yeah. Interrupt. You may have to quote the name. Let's remove. Maybe the... you can't have a then use it no. as an index. 
Oh, da- also, also, I can because ta- it contains a dash. Yeah. Damn you, JQ. No, no, dot open braces and then index it as a string. Yeah. Let's do, how would I do that? Like this? Yeah, there we go. Like this. Null? Just pipe it into less again. I couldn't follow quickly enough. Interrupt. Oh, and pass uppercase C Done. to it. Okay, we have that. And then yeah, okay. we want to do, we want to do, let's see, how does this go? Oh, it's called total or is it the rate? Pipe it into less uh, and give JQ an uppercase C so but it still colors the output as, despite writing to a pipe. Uh, oh, you mean this? C capital, yes. was it? Yes, C capital. Uh, and the less with R color capital. output even. Uh, what did you do now? No, no, it's just a typo. No panic. There you go. Yeah, so, so okay, dot interrupt. Yeah, so now we want the dot interrupt here. Interrupt. I hate this word. Okay, interrupt. And now we so want. So does your system, Rupert? <laughs> <laughs> and now we want to sort it by the total. Yeah. So then this would go to sort. Sean, thank you very much. You want to pipe it through some interpolation. Okay, and now we do sort. Which uh, beehive issue would that be, uh, Sean? I think Sean left. Yeah. I think Sean left. Um, But this box is... It's a nice toy. Is it sort or sort by? I think it should be, I think it should be sort by. I always have to look up the examples and the online documentation. I, I remember it. Don't use it often enough to ever get comfortable with the kind of strange sort by take on functional programming. Dot, I, I think it would be sort by dot total. Let's do that. Oopsie, oopsie daisy. Unix shell quoting is no, 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 not that. I think it would be like this. There you go. And now I can do pi plus dash r capital. There you go. I actually did it. Yeah. And the last line would be yeah, the IXL is the biggest, the receiving Q. And be, the one after that is the, uh, what is that? The CPU timer makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then we have the RX. Again, it's all receiving queues. And then the mouse for some reason. And the, again, it's CPU timers. See Linux people? We have a proper operating system that supports like JSONing things out of the box. Uh... Yeah, that's nice. So now if we can have it in a few more tools. Mm. And a few more tools be be turned into libraries for easy consumption. And then the tool is basically uh, the parser around the library. I I heard that Linux people have like a tool, which is like Linux command to JSON or something. Like no, like like this like they have a command that Which you just pipe. takes common command outputs and exactly. turns them into yeah. JS. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what it's called, but I I've heard that they have a tool like that. And then when you go to IRC and tell people about Libexo, they're like, "Oh, that's thing. Like you can have that." I'm like, "Yeah, we do." And they're like, "On FreeBSD, isn't it dead?" I'm like, "No, it's not." So. No, IRC is fine. <laughs> okay, so okay, yeah, we got this. How uh, do you the... stop people from showing up um, and dropping your kids? Other than you babysit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you return them with a puppy and a drum kit. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no, harmonicas are so much smaller. Basically, <laughs> send them back with a noisy toy. Okay, anything else in here? Nope. I think we did test as much as things as possible. That's 
kind of no, there are tons of things you can test. Well, okay. Well, uh, it's been four and a half hours. I yeah. think this is a record at this point. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. John, anything else on your part? I think he fell asleep watching it. Could be. Could be. Okay. And this so is am I. Very much. Nice. Sleep with us. Okay. Well, uh, I'll be closing this. We had a lot of fun on this call. <laughs> We did a yeah. lot of things that, like, I think we always it's totally a uh, bit of topic. Yeah, it's it's bit on topic, a bit off topic, depending on who you ask yeah. and what they do, you know. Yeah, but uh, the IOV setup and seeing basically benchmarking this and finding out what you can configure via IOV CTL, mm -hmm. and it may you may have, for example, the, you may be able to modify the number of to receive and transmit rings so that if you have only 16 maybe you can mm -hmm. have four times as many which allows mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. vnet enable jail to make use of four times as many cpu cores efficiently mm -hmm. for its networking needs mm -hmm. because there can basically be one uh, interrupt per queue and then oh one CPU gets interrupted if this queue isn't empty. Mm -hmm. And this is a good idea because as soon as this queue is not empty, then this kernel thread starts processing the packets after a small delay to, to interpretation. And if you have too few queues, basically you're only putting the networking load on a few CPUs. So you're only using, let's say, four of your cores if you only have four queues. For yes. 10 gigs and TCP with all the offloading enabled, that's probably more than enough. Because the nice thing about this is that uh, it should be possible to make use of the TSO LRO because you don't have to bridge. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to throw all your CPU cores partly at the problem to have them bridge on a, these days quite fast bridge in software driver when you can just let hardware do its thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think I think I'll be using one of the next for the host itself, and yes, the other next uh, exactly divided. So you can have sixty three uh, jails per physical network card if you yes. plug them into the same switch yep. or not well no 64 on the second one if you just put both nicks in and say okay that's fine yeah. and and do you think that free bsd would be smart enough where let's say if my if config ixl uh zero currently has an ip address of this right one nine two one six eight one six eight two mm -hmm. what is that two five four let's just call mm -hmm. it ten zero you know ten one yep. great and my jail on the IAVF interface mm -hmm. has let's say um ten two right ten zero zero mm -hmm. two do you think that freebsd would be smart enough to pass the traffic internally or would it go to the switch and come back every time if the host and the jail uh, that does really doesn't just depend on FreeBSD. It also depends on the network card and its driver. I That's see. something to be uh, tried. There's a good chance it does it internally. Hard measure. Find it. Find out how many packets per second are on the NIC. Well, you could. So, uh, oh, by the way, there is an RC.D script to apply these uh, configurations very early in during boot. It's I called see. IOV CTL, and as it takes a list of configurations to load. So you can have one configuration per file per interface. Exactly this one. It's a fairly trivial script, which I can't read given the quality of the video stream, but I've read it before. So it just loops over the uh, IOV CTL files variable from your loader.conf. No, still not readable. I have the same script available to read. I know what it says. There you go. <laughs> no, it's terror contrast. I given the quality of the 
double re-encoded video, but still. Um, just cut it. It's short Ooh. enough that you ju can just cut it. Okay, fine. You've convinced me. Okay. I have the script available, whoever <laughs> is crazy enough to re reach response. So as you can okay. see here, it loops using a for loop over the IOV CTL files. Files, which and is a variable inside. In rc.conf, if you define it. Very nice. Very nice. So, uh, and then it just applies the flag. So the uppercase C by default, I think. Yep. Yep. So yep. that it applies for configuration during boot. Yep. And then in the stop, it does the stop. That's very exactly. much awesome. Exactly. Stop it destroys them. Yeah. And that way you can have it run before NetIF so that you can use the non pass through virtual device as your host network card. Yeah. The, the, the you could network. Could even put that in right now. Reboot if you uh, reconfigure your IF dot con, uh, yep. IF config underscore interface name reboot and your system should come back up do you think that docker supports iov uh ctl mm, type things or i sorry? don't know if docker supports but the concept of linux network namespaces may support it i've never I heard someone use it uh because that's not really my area of interest uh linux container io srv maybe so they do make heavy use of it for uh, hypervisors, but I don't know. I haven't heard anyone using it for Linux containers. ETH tool. I think yeah. that's even deprecated now. Yeah, so SBR, CTL, and so on. Why do you need to update the what? Oh, enable um, you. Okay. Enable VIO MMU. And then max VF. Okay, so it's a kernel uh, driver. It's an argument to the module. Okay, yeah. Similar yeah. to a loader conf. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And then it would create those. Sounds cute. And then you would get... Interesting if we're still using... Maybe it's just an old uh, timer because they're still using IF config. Or the script. Yeah, it's yeah. Very old because agreed, agreed. IP2 predates most Docker stuff. And but now, here, yeah, looks like they're yeah. using it. Move VF into namespace, and then you can do that. Yeah, with that's the pipe the work, for example. Same okay. thing you just did. Yeah, yeah. With the VNet and AbleJS, just yeah. with Docker and Linux. Okay, cute. Very much nice. It's very. One very... of the things you could just test is how much internal bandwidth there is on your network card. Maybe run IPerf between multiple virtual functions maybe mm -hmm. the internal bandwidth was more than 10 gigabits mm, interesting that would be interesting to learn that would be interesting because the freebsd bridge can be faster than 10 gig no it's but not. it takes a lot of cpu cycles to be faster than 10 gig on several cores mm -hmm. as far as i while know while the hardware oh, should take gig. very few cpu cycles comparably even if it maxes out at 10 gig why not? Yeah, Illum OS and Crossbar, for them, it's a special case of Crossbar. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I, th I, th I think Crossbow bridges can go up to 40 gigs. Okay. I, I think, I'm not sure, but maybe we should yeah, ask. And I've Illumos seen friend. people drive, uh, I've seen examples of uh, NetMap going into the tens of gigabits maybe even 80 or 100 but mm. only for contrived micro benchmarks <laughs> which is oh it's nice and software injects Nothing random either. emojis into yeah well, Jan, this was very much fun, and John is probably asleep. That's okay, and someone is trying to SSH into my just uh, just for um, the entertainment purposes. Take the full recording and send it to Michael to please cut uh, it into a best of series. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I was thinking that, like, because we talked about multiple topics. We talked about IPMI. We talked intensively. We talked about storage and we talked about 
uh, boards, and then we talked about this part, right? I think yeah, we can have we, like uh, short sprinkled some when, random profanities in yes. there to uh, vent our frustration. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I th I, th I think we can divide, uh, uh, not divide, but rather also generate four part of of of, of sure. So that, we oh, can yeah. skip the next four. Yeah, yeah. This is good. This is very much good. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, Jan, this was fun. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm going to adjourn the meeting at this point. Uh, time UTC is 21.31. Great. See you next week. And uh, UTC. There we go. Uh, thank you, whoever stayed here this long. And uh, like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next week.